No. Let's, let's, see, no. let's see some jazz hands. Come on now. No. Come uh, on. I've got the screen locked on you. You refuse to do jazz hands. Wow. No. Jazz. Wow. Okay, I'm going to do jazz hands Rocky by jazz myself. Hands. Rocky jazz. Rocky <laughs> Patrick R. starting early. We're live. We're live. Thanks for being so patient. We hope you got your patience. Big girl panties on tonight. And of course, we have this dude here, Patrick R. from TFB TV, here to bring the noise, bring the trouble. We will be talking yes. about gun news and a whole bunch of other stuff going on in the gun world. Um, yes. We've got some juicy things that I think we're ready to talk about tonight. Of course, we will have some gun porn, gun yeah, porn oration. Sure. And uh, what was that debate that you wanted to have, Patrick, with uh, the folks out have, there? I want, I want to hurt everyone's feelings with a Glock versus 1911 debate. <laughs> okay, there you go. Glock versus 1911. Lola, make that the title. Patrick R. wants to talk Glock versus 1911. What's up to everyone out there? Thanks for joining us. Um, I want to shout out first. Go ahead. What's, what's up, Patrick? Lola, can you kindly make the title Glock versus 1911, colon, why you're wrong? Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> so Patrick R. wants the title to be Glock versus 1911, colon, why you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> she says, oh, my gosh. Seriously? <laughs> It's early. Yes. Patrick is just bringing the noise. What's up to everyone that's joining us? Uh, let me shout out the good folks that have been hanging out got, here uh, in, in the chat. Yeah, got, Patrick, make sure you say what's up to everyone in the chat. We've got Mike Lawrence Lerwick. He was first tonight. Uh, Tyvin was in there. Okay. Well, Chris B, bad. Boss Hog, Joe Carpenter. Um, got a bunch of folks hanging out wow. in the chat with us. So if I if I miss you, Chris Bolas. Vanessa Kitty. What's up? Uh, Vanessa Kitty, E Rock is up in there. Peter Hinkle is in there. You know, uh, lots of good folks. Do a roll call. Just tell me who you are, and I, I'm sure I missed a bunch of people. Shut up and play your guitar. Was giving us stuff. I did say Lawrence Lerwick, The Tyvin Show, Chris B, Boss Hog, Joe Carpenter, Chris Bolas. Shut up and play your guitar. I just said Miss Cherry Wine was up in here for a minute. That is The Tyvin Show's wife. I think she came in here to check on him. Make sure he was behaving himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, PTP Tactical. Wow. PTP Tactical hanging out in here. Tango Hunter. What's up, PTP Tactical? They're actually hanging out in, in the chat. That's very cool. Got a bunch of cans from PTP Tactical. Did someone just tell me no eating during the podcast? During, Some, during the show? Someone was complaining about that. It probably is the Tyvin show. You know. Okay. You know uh, what? You know, will, you, I'll, I'll do what I can. Yeah, you know what I noticed, Patrick? <laughs> People like to watch these shows <laughs> just to complain about you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whenever, yeah. whenever you come on, <laughs> there is something to complain about. Um, Michael Smith, Maximilian the Mighty, Ray Woods, Gun Food for Thought, Imposter. Um, lots of lots, just a bunch of people in the thing. So here's what I want you guys to do. Make sure you click that thumbs up. Click the thumbs up for this video. Make sure you share this video with your family and friends on social media. I'm, I'm going to probably do that right now. And well, not probably. Definitely. I'm going to do that right now. And make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hank Strange, as well as TFB TV. We are going to talk about some videos that Patrick has done and upcoming videos. Etc. Yes. yes, yes, yes. What have you been up to since we saw you last, my friend? Oh, man. Uh, so I've got to open up my little uh, folder full of my mouse will work. Um, I see some people have the talking about the Gen 5. So some folks have had a chance to get a Gen 5. Good. Red. Awesome. That's yeah. I, I can't wait till mine show up. I've got two coming. I've got a 17 okay. and a 19 coming. Okay. Uh, all right. So I guess that's probably not the right folder. There we are. Uh, so, yeah, I've had like a bunch of stuff on my plate. Um, I know. We ran a video on the uh, H&R Handy Rifle and 300 Blackout with a, a Sounds Co. Uh, Omega on it, which was a pretty cool little gun. Um, and then I did a 22 and a couple of other guns. Um, mm -hmm. But... Uh, Stuff that's coming up. That's the exciting stuff because the, the other stuff's cool, like the uh, the other stuff. And, um, you know, it, 
like it's cool and all, but it's not as cool as the stuff that's coming up. Uh, I've got a video on the Glock 18C. Uh, it's actually a buddy of mine who uh, is a dealer. He daily carries it. Um, so we've got that coming. Uh, <laughs> he daily carries the Glock 18C. For people who don't know, that is the... Um, the uh, it's, a, it's basically a Glock... Yeah, so it's a factory um, machine pistol from Glock. So it is a, um, you know, a compensated full size, like seven, Glock 17 size gun with a selector switch on the side. So either, you know, full auto happy or semi auto. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll see here. I also got a chance to get my hands on a Braverman Stinger. What is that? Uh, that's the pen gun that you pull out and you bend it in half, and then it's a, a pistol. Oh, okay. So it's actually a non-NFA pen gun. Hmm. Um, let's see here. I I got a chance to shoot a factory CZ Scorpion uh, machine gun. So oh, a, 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 okay. a legit cool. sub gun, not a conversion or... Yeah, just an SBR, so I got my hands on one of those. Um, did did also, CZ bring that through to you, or someone else had it? No, the same guy that carries the 18C, um, uh, okay. SRAM Auto Weapons. Uh, we also did a uh, Knight's Armament Company Beretta, the snaps, uh, the, the snap suppressor thing. Mm -hmm. It's the snap-on suppressor model, sorry. I'm okay. trying to remember which one it is. <laughs> um. But that is a reasonably rare model of the Beretta, which has a slide lock to keep the slide closed and make the suppressed fire as quiet as possible. Okay. So you guys and have a bunch of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, also going to be coming out with the, the Ruger Gunsight Scout video. And I... Also, I'm going to be doing a video on this, which is one of the Gen 4 um, 19Cs, which is now my, my, my carry gun. Uh, this is why we're late starting. I had, I had to, to go get this. So Gen 4 19C. Um, yep. Okay. So now what are the differences with this? This is from the factory, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, uh, no, it's... It, I've had it for like three hours, and I've already modified the crap out of it. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, I came so home. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, I came home and took it apart down to the small parts. Um, I already have installed a grip plug in there, and uh, actually, we can talk about why the grip plug is pretty awesome uh, for the Glock, and you probably should be using one. Mm -hmm. um, I've also installed a set of Ameriglow iDot sights on here. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Let me lock you. Let me lock you in. Hold up. Do it again. I didn't have you locked in. Okay. So, um, Tyvin Show says he can see Hank in the right part of your screen. I have no complaints about that. Looks like I'm reflecting off the safe. I'm totally happy. Uh, <laughs> look, I can see my mohawk. Oh, look. There's yeah. Mohawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, even, though I'm not, yeah. even though I'm not on the screen, look, now I'm on the screen. Check out this badass. Look at this shirt here. And it's I know, you know, I just want to lock me. I've had this shirt since, like, the early noughties, so, like, 2002 or three, or something like that. It's one of my favorite shirts. <laughs> Love it. It's a Mark Echo classic from my hip-hop days. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, uh, we got a video on that coming, and we can talk about that in a little bit. And I also have a Gen 5. You know, like I said, I've got those on the way. Yeah. Um, so talking about the Gen 5 Glock, because lots of folks out there have had a chance. I know we've, we've shown it here on the, uh, on the channel before. I have a 19. This is actually mine. It belonged to my brother, Anonymous. Anonymous bought this for his daughter. And she, she's a gun chick. She's like 15 years old. And, uh, you know, she's always shooting. So is Anonymous. They're always out there. She's kind of like a 1911 type of gun chick. That's how um, I think you decided you wanted to have that debate. Yes. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. You said she's a 1911 uh, kind of gun chick. And I was like, ah, to be young and dumb. Yeah. So I think he bought this for her because, they, because of the uh, lack of the finger grooves. And he thought she might like this. No rounds through this. I think she just went, nope, don't want it. 
Oh, that's a shame. That's so a shame. I so then the, he was like, "Hey, I need that money for other stuff," and um, I bought it from him through my own personal FFL. You know, we do have an FFL SOT. It's um, if you if you see us on um, Gunbroker, where what is it? Strange Firearms on Gunbroker. So I bought it, and uh, I guess we're gonna test it now. You know. Okay. See, you end up with one anyway. You didn't yeah. mean to. Yeah, wound up with one. Um, Does Lola you know, know that you planned it? Yes, I had to confirm that through Lola. <laughs> no, 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 no. Does she know that you planned? Uh, you know, you, you oh. like sat down, talked to your niece, and oh, I made her. Oh, you, you don't want that Glock. <laughs> no, I didn't talk. No, I didn't talk to her. She's very strong-willed. <laughs> In the store, she was telling my, when my brother told me he went to pick it up from the store, and she's like, uh, I don't know why you're buying that, because I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when you order the thing from the store, right, I guess he could have probably said, uh, you know, I don't want it. But he bought it, and then, you know, I did the deal with him. So, you know. Yeah, you know. Hey, this is how it goes sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the way it works. how it goes, yeah. yeah. I was going to wait a little while until someone else had one and started shooting it. And they were like, hey, I'm trying to mitigate, you know, how much money we drop on guns. But that is not happening. <laughs> yeah, no, it just doesn't work sometimes. Yeah. As you see. And look, I will show you this. This is a new purchase right here, my friend. Check this out. I wonder if you recognize what this is. What? Let me lock it. Let me lock it on here. Um who recognizes what this gun is here? Check it out. I'm going to show you. You should. You should uh, get it from the from the from the butt stock. You should get it. Okay. So here you go. There you go. That should tell you everything you need to know. Yeah. Daniel Defense DDM4 ISR, 300 blackout, which it is integrally suppressed. Yes, it is. I got a chance to shoot that at the NRA um, ASA shoot. Yeah. So there you go. I think I shot. I think I shot one of these as well. Um, actually, Big Daddy Guns ordered this for someone. It came in, and then the guy um, decided he didn't want it, and I was like, "What? I'm gonna jump all over that. Like that?" Yeah, exactly. So I've never. I don't know. You probably have a few Daniel Defense rifles. I've never owned one before, man. Never. No, you don't have one? No, not one. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't have one up until today, so now this is officially. I, I own one good. factory AR. One. Oh yeah, that's right. You said that before. What was the factory one you had? I've gotten a, uh, a Springfield Armory Saint. Oh, okay. A Saint. Interesting. Yep, and Interesting choice. Have, well, no, I went to the launch event and I kept one of the rifles uh, for my kid. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's how you wound up with that. Yeah, I, you know, I've got some factory. I actually, I have a five, uh, 516 from SIG. I've got an older patrol version. I know they were in the news because the 516 Carbon and some other rifles that they put out recently, they had a recall on it. Yes. So we will be yep, talking yep. about that as well as other things. Let me remind everyone to click the thumbs up and then share this video on social media. I've I've done it. Have you, have you done it, Patrick? You Probably know, not. While you're over there eating, make sure you do that. <laughs> and uh, I will I will help you out here and uh, pull up some stuff. There's a whole bunch of things I want to talk about. So let me see. What, what do I want to talk about first? I'm trying to see. You know what? Let's talk about this up front. Up front. There's a, uh, another blog, gun blog, that I won't mention out of deference and respect for TFB TV uh, no, being no, no, on, no. on with it's us. Guns, it's guns.com. Okay. Oh, okay. They're due credit because they put hard work putting these articles together yeah. just like we do. Okay. Okay, cool. Then we'll do that. Guns.com. They're the only ones that actually have this, and it's from uh, Chris Egger. And uh, it's here's the – I'll give you guys the title, the headline. Remember the auto glove electric trigger finger? ATF says, nope. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> So uh, I'm okay federal, with that. <laughs> federal, strangely, all right with that. <laughs> I thought it was fake. I thought it was fake. Federal regulators have pulled the plug on the planned three hundred and fifty dollar glove containing a plunger activated electric motorized trigger finger, designed as a trigger actuation device that does not permanently attach to a gun. The auto glove made headlines earlier this summer 
The full, the uh, fully contained TAD used a battery pack that attached to the wrist or forearm to mechanically manipulate the trigger at variable speeds to include single, three round, or continuous fire at rates past a thousand rounds per minute. However, as noted by the company, the, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives tested the auto glove and issued a determination letter last week that the device may not be used or possessed by individuals and is considered a machine gun under the National Firearms Act. So, so my question is, why in the world these slightly retarded people who designed the auto glove <laughs> felt as though this was going to fly? Um, yeah, you know what? That's interesting. Like, why do they put, why do they do all this marketing and everything and they never had approval from the ATF? Because that's weird. Because you're dumb is, is why. Yeah, that doesn't. It's like the only way of putting it. <laughs> that makes you stop for a minute. And because I, I thought back to when I would have to go back and see what they put out on all their material. Um, so they've stopped taking orders and they're, and they're issuing refunds for those who paid Wait, for they, the device. They were, yeah. They were taking money. Yeah, and they're a small oh. startup, and the, the manufacturer says they do not have the resources to fight the determination. Uh, good. So, yeah, this is interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be that guy that says, check it out. If you started marketing a product to consumers without getting a ATF determination letter, letter about your like machine gun loophole glove, um, and then you actually started taking money before you got a determination letter from the ATF, you probably shouldn't be building anything. Like this is. Yeah. I would like to know, do you know anyone, do you have any kind of insight on who's behind this company? Who owns it? No, no, no idea. Um, and okay. you know, frankly, don't know. that way. if they don't yeah. have the funds, it's probably some dude in a shed. Uh, it looks like it was made with parts from like somebody's old like drill or something. Yeah, if anyone out there knows who owns this company and all that, we, so we did go to autogloveusa.com, and there's just a big massive thing there that says, uh, on 9-16-2017, we received some disappointing news from the ATF. The ATF tested the autoglove and responded with an unfavorable determination. So the bottom line is the ATF determined the autoglove may not be used or possessed by individuals, and for this reason, we have issued 100% refunds to every person that ordered an auto glove, I would like to know how many people. So if someone knows someone at this company, please like get in touch with us. Let me see. There's no, is there an about? There's a home and there's I'm a contact. On that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to dig it into it. <laughs> yeah, let us know what's up with this. Uh, and you know, if if uh, anyone from Auto Glove is out there and you want to come on and speak your piece on it and say what you have to say, it's uh, so Why? at least we know it's not fake, right? Because the ATF got one and tested it. Right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. I'm I'm willing to bet it's the same one that was in the video. Uh, I do find it really interesting that they black out all of their information on the letterhead of the determination letter. Yeah, I'm wondering. Um, oh, they show that. Where is that? Where is that letterhead? It, scroll scroll down. Um, on that uh, on the index page, uh, you'll get to a scribed window, and it's got the uh, like determination letter there. Oh. Maybe it's getting blocked because uh, I think what I'm using here is blocking everything. So they have that blocked out. So we don't know who actually um, who actually owns the company. So I think someone's saying they have a Facebook page. So if any of you guys can go over to the Facebook page and just send them messages through the Facebook page, telling them that we're on live right now. If they want to, they can uh, they can come in here, jump in in the comments if they don't want to show who they are and all that kind of stuff. But at this point, they've been shut down. Um, that's interesting. Do you know where was it? What state was it in? Mm. No info on that? No, dude. Uh, they they, they taken a marker and blacked all of it out on the letter. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so I'm going to try to figure out like if there's like an actual company or if it's yeah. like, EPA or what. Yeah. That's interesting to know. I'd like to know about this. And you know what? Speaking of that, last when was it? I think last week. I'm going to try to search your... Um, your articles on uh, TFB right now because last week you had an interesting article that sparked some interest. <laughs> um, Usually you, how that goes. Yeah, you had, yeah. You know what? I'm always like scared when I read your articles now, man. Why? 
Because I'm thinking, is Patrick just fucking with me or what? <laughs> I totally might be. <laughs> you know, so I never know. I never know. You got me with the uh, Patrick is fired article. But this one was from, um, you remember the Amazon one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to see where that is, but I don't see it now. Because you got so uh, many. It's, it's, it's there somewhere. Yeah, let me see. I'm going to put in Amazon. So you had this. So tell us about that Amazon article. Uh, I just had a reader email me and said, hey, did you know that they're selling machine gun parts on uh, Amazon? I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so they sent me a link, and yeah, absolutely, there is so, uh, some dude listing, like, Chinese knockoff uh, drop-in Lotto selector switches for Glocks on uh, mm -hmm. Amazon. Yeah. I mean, there's not a whole lot past that um, other than, like, it's a machine gun part that's illegal as hell to own. Uh, you know, it's like on Amazon. Yeah. You can have shift to your door uh, yeah. along with the ATF and like prison time. Yeah. So for anyone who missed this, the, uh, the headline was looking to make your Glock full auto. Amazon has an illegal full auto conversion. Do not buy. <laughs> so, yep. and then we did go, I don't know if it's still on Amazon. We would have to check. No, it's gone. It's gone. Okay. So the comments on that, did you read the, con the, um, like the reviews and feedback that people put up there, that was funny. Yeah, I yeah, I never read the comments as a rule. <laughs> well, no, on, no, not on your article, but if you no, actually no, 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 I know, I know. Oh, that was that was okay. the joke. Um, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I read a couple of them. Uh, I didn't go back and look at it actually. I didn't know it was gone until um, somebody had emailed me and said, "Hey, um, I think you're lying." I was like, "No," <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I didn't know it was gone until somebody emailed me claiming that I made the whole thing up. No, it was there for a few days. We went to it when we were what? talking about it last uh -huh. week. And there were comments like, you know, people were like, this is definitely the ATF. <laughs> Don't buy this. Yes. <laughs> you will get arrested. <laughs> so, yes. So you can't buy, so like uh, something like that, you can't even buy it for Airsoft if you have an Airsoft block? No, dude. Like, uh, I mean, that that is... Okay, um, I'm going to drop this in your chat, and mm -hmm. that way you can uh, throw it in there so they can take a look at it, mm -hmm. the, uh, the photos. Um, so it's a machine gun part. Like, this is a complete 100% sear. Normally, mm -hmm. this is something that, like, FFLs, like 0702 uh, uh, FFL SOTs, will serialize as a machine gun. Like the mm -hmm. sear can be serialized and registered as a machine gun and then just put into any title and firearm, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that you have a complete one like makes it illegal as hell. Now, I'm sure it wouldn't be illegal to own if you didn't have a Glock, but if you had a Glock or access to a Glock, it becomes constructive intent. And then maybe constructive intent with just a complete piece. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, so did you think the ATF is going to be running down some people? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how Amazon responds to that. Um, I'm hoping there weren't too many dumbasses out there. Yeah. There's probably a few gun guys out there like, Hmm, I'll get it. <laughs> if you did get it, everything from Amazon is tracked and the ATF will probably get in touch with you and want that thing back so they could destroy it. Well, you know, I'm willing to bet that there's, like, I can find four of them on eBay right now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know I found them on, like, six other websites for sale. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, like, they're not hard to get. And, in fact, there is U.S.-based companies that offer 80% versions um, that are entirely legal to sell. Oh, like, they are. Okay, buy them. I can go buy them. Anybody in the chat can go buy one of the 80% pieces, but the second that it is completed, then it becomes a controlled item. Yeah, so unless you're a manufacturer, yeah, or you have some, I, I, can, I guess, no. can you get a demo letter for that? No, right? No, no, if it's 80%, um, no, actually, you couldn't get a demo letter, letter for the complete one uh, that was on Amazon, and you can't have a demo letter for the 80% one because it's not a complete firearm at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so an 0702 SOT would have to finish it, then you would have to buy it on a demo letter if you're a type uh, uh, an O one O two S O T. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, Waylon Wilson says, "Okay, the auto glove looks bad, 
and dot 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 built by Marines. I think I do remember that, right? When the when that first came out, that it was saying something like built by Marines. I would like to know. It was like the one smart there. one that you know, eats the higher level crayon. <laughs> um, there, there's a few. There's a few smart Marines out there. <laughs> one or two. The, yeah. The, he's, he's the dude I'm gonna like, get a whole bunch of Marines responding to me, but I do. I do know some smart Marine he, dudes. <laughs> Whoever came up with the auto glove only drinks the finest farm raised glue. <laughs> yeah, I would. You know what? I would have honestly like to talk to that guy. Yeah, I, I really would too. Like, I, I, I honestly, I, I, if you can get him on here, I want to be here because I want to look at okay. him in, in the eye through my computer and say, "What the hell were you thinking? Yeah, what were you? What was going through your mind?" And that would be interesting to. I, I would really like to know if that was a marine that came up with that idea. Um, God, shut up and play your guitar. To... Doesn't want to hear the marine stuff. He doesn't want to hear us knocking the marines. Well, I'm so, not knocking them. I'm just yeah. stating a fact. They eat glue yeah. and eat crayons. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. That that's that's that Patrick. Patrick said that. You know. So there you go. It's, it's, it could be true. It could be true. If there's anyone out there that's a marine that wants to come on and contest that and have the argument with, well, what were you in the army? You're like a grunt in the army. What did you do? No, nah, man. I, I I did. I was an air defense artillery guy. Uh huh. Nothing interesting. Yeah. So I'm sure they have. I'm sure the marine dudes have stuff they say about you guys. This is how military dudes get down, by the way. You know how I annoy yeah. I annoy one of my friends who who was in the army by um, every every other military guy that comes up. So like, let's say a guy comes up and he was in the Navy. I'm like, hey, weren't you in the Navy too? And that just annoys the crap out of him. So, yeah. Let's see here. Shut All up right. and play it, guitar ahead. says, I eat crayons and ask for seconds. <laughs> see? Is it, is it even dangerous? I thought, it, first of all, first of all, aren't crayons like safe to eat? They probably are safe to eat. Yes, they are. They are. Yeah, because lots of kids, -toxic. including mine, have eaten those things. <laughs> Non-toxic. Um, yeah, so. No, you're, Dead Enders, you're right. I wasn't 11 Bravo, uh, thankfully. Because, mm. like, that's a, a, an awful, awful job to have. I, my, my job wasn't very good either. Um, <laughs> but. Michael Smith says, go Navy. Okay, you got some. As so, uh, as always happens, you got someone that um, Tyvin Show says. Uh, please ask Patrick if he was thirteen. Echo, don't know. I have no idea what that no, means. No, um, I was not an Echo. I was a fourteen Tango. So okay. my job was to drive one of these things. Um, I did oh. the Patriot missile launcher. Oh, okay, cool. You know what? What is that vehicle called? Because I think Walter has one of those vehicles. Um, this would be the uh, the the truck portion is the Hemet. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, and then you've got a launcher trailer thing. Um, so yeah, I, I did the Patriot. I was a fourteen Tango. Oh, which sweet. Was a really crappy, 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 crap, crap, crap job. Uh, when the recruiter's like, "Yeah, man, you get to fire missiles." And then you spend all of your time picking grass, driving trucks, and setting up launchers. Uh, <laughs> but you you launch some of those, right? You no, that's Come not the tango's on. job. No, man, no, that's not the tango's job. That's the echo. So um, there's like a bunch of different jobs associated with just getting that missile battery set up and like, um, you know, in the fight. Uh, the Tangos were your basic, uh, you know, grunts. Uh, we were the idiots that drove the trucks. We set the launchers up and, uh, you know, like did really basic maintenance. Uh, so glorified truck driver is what it was, but it's actually a combat MOS. And then um, you have the 14 Echoes, and those guys were the, um, you know, the, the, the dudes that sat in the truck that controlled the launchers that I set up. And then you had the Juliets. The Juliets were the radar operators who fed the information to the truck where the uh, the 14 Echoes sat, you know, and that fed all the information to the launchers that I set up. And then you had this other MOS that had just come online right about the time that I was leaving, um, and I forget which one it is, but um, it was a 14 X-ray maybe, and they did, like, all the maintenance and all that nonsense. Um, 
So what was the? So how long were you? How long were you in the army? You're a vet, right? You're. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, three years. Three years. Okay. So what was the coolest thing you did in the three years? Got out. <laughs> oh, really? You didn't yeah, do any went, kind of. Um, you didn't do any kind of badassery. You didn't get to ride in the Frundy at all. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Know. You ever saw um, Iron Man? No, I mean like nothing interesting, really. No. Mm -mm. Okay. So I joined in the uh, early 2000s, like start of War on Terror. Um, the the equipment was really crappy at that time, and because we were combat uh, a combat unit, but not like a like infantry unit, mm -hmm. um, we got like really shitty equipment. Because uh, I mean, even when I left, we were just transitioning to carry handle M fours. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, give you an idea okay. as how far behind we were, <laughs> um, like. <laughs> After I had been in my line unit for a while, I finally got one of the, the newer interceptor vests that had a, 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 a ceramic plate um, in it. Like prior to that, it was the old, like shitty 80s Steel. flak vests. Oh, okay. Oh, flak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we would call it the flak vest, but they're, they're the, the, the past jet uh, vests. Um, and then the past jet uh, helmets were my jam as well. Uh, <laughs> I, I was in when we made the transition to ACU, okay. and that was hot shit. Apparently. What is ACU? You're going to have to fill me in on that. Um, Army combat uniform. Uh, oh, is that the new, like, was that the beret thing? Is that what you're talking about? No, 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 no. yeah. Uh, that was, uh, I was during, I was in during the beret period. Mm -hmm. um, we need to see pictures. Come on. <laughs> so, oh, I want to see. I, Were you skinny? You know, Probably. <laughs> oh hell yeah, dude! I was 140 pounds. Ooh, ooh, 140. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, I was. I was. I was much, much tinier than I am now. So, you, what did you go oh. in like after um, you went in after high school or something? Yeah, um, actually, I got my GED and joined early because I felt the need to do that, like an idiot. Um. And how was it for a freckle dude in the desert? Or is that being like oh, too man. forward? <laughs> no, man, it's not that you could bad. Not, oh, really? Bad. Okay, okay. Nah. Actually, I really like the desert a lot. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see what I got here. I haven't dug into this, but I'm not a big picture person. Yeah, no, but we want to so, see pictures, so come on. We're here. Well, we're, walking, we're strolling down memory lane. Um, 904 Outdoors says he hasn't been 140 pounds since in elementary school. I would say probably, I know, I know, Steve, he probably was 140 pounds like in nursery school. <laughs> I can guarantee you that, and, and I'm not fat shaming. That's my friend. You know, that's my boy, but I think he was probably 140 <laughs> when he was in nursery school. <laughs> so let's see what, what you got. I'm trying to figure out when this is. Uh, that would be right when I first got married. Oh, who is that dude? Right. <laughs> okay, so you always had you always had a big head. The head size <laughs> has never changed. <laughs> um. And uh, you had so you're a ginger also, huh? Oh, Lola is cracking oh, up. Yeah. She just that that just came through to Lola. I can hear her laughing. <laughs> I can hear her cackling back She's, there. She says he looked like a baby. <laughs> he, he was yeah. a baby at that point, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I was married for two years. Oh, look at this point. one. <laughs> Wait a second. What are you doing? Uh, you're in water. Sw swimming. Yeah, swimming. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did look like a baby. Yeah, no, I've always been uh, like reasonably young looking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely. That is a baby face. Uh, Waylon Wilson says, wow, baby face Nelson there. Yeah, the Tyvon show says, okay, go. Patrick is a baby face. Every dude named, pa oh, look at that. Look at that head of hair on that guy. Wait, uh, yeah, I don't have that hair anymore. What kind of phone was that? Um, looking at it, it looks like a Motorola Q. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not sure. Wow. 
Oh, he was pretty really smooth there. Yeah. Yeah, there he was looking sophisticated. And then I think there was some snow, if, I, if I'm remembering. Yes. Correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Gun Food right. for Thought said, uh, nope, water training, been there, done that. And this was like very early in your career. <laughs> <laughs> like, how old are you? Uh, um, so I got to look at where this is. So I'm trying to figure it out. Seven. That is, it's the same house my parents are in now. So I'm going to say that it's going to be eight. Eight. Wow. Ish. Show us one more time. One more time. Eight or nine. Oh, wow. And yeah. this was like, was this Halloween or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Here, let me, let me turn this monitor a little oh, bit. Wow. Yeah, we're going to figure out what's going and on. And is that a Nerf gun? Or uh, is that? Uh, is yeah. that a 1911? No, it can't be. No, it yes, looks like it a SIG. Is. Well, is it a 1911 or a SIG? No, 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 no. That's a 1911. Um, okay. You, you, you're you exercising bad figure Finger discipline there. Well, you know, like I said, like I said young and dumb. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll just tease it. Too young yeah, to... Uh, I, haven't, I haven't been to this box in a long time. You'll shoot your eye out! I think well, I saw somewhere... Like airsoft guns. Um, someone on the news was talking about Nerf or something like that, where they said, like, you know, you're, you're in danger for shooting your eye out with Nerf. Yeah. <laughs> E Rock People says, My are... rifle is my best friend. It is my life. I must master it as I must master my life. So that's some kind of chant from, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not something I would have heard. Yeah. Uh... <clears throat> so James Arsenault says, Looks like he smeared a dog turd on his face. That was very cruel. You do, you do what you have to do. Yeah, I mean, come on, you know, it's young Picasso. He'll never be. He'll never be that creative again, man. Like when you were young, all the all the great artists, you know, all the great artists spent a lot of time in their life trying to go back to when they were young. You know, from my wife, my brother, uh, myself, and her friend out drinking. But yeah, no, I, I previously was. Uh, a little on the, on the baby faced side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's still, that's kind of way. Still, the beard. Yeah, you still are. I mean, yeah, the beard is helping you out a little bit. Oh yeah, no, I I, I am unrecognizable if I uh, you know shave the beard. Yeah. See Gun food for thought says that's the marine rifle prayer. Oh yeah, that's why I don't know it. Wait, no, you guys can't like remember that much stuff. That's like a <laughs> lot to remember. <laughs> for a marine mm, yeah Let's see yeah. all right now i'm in the uh the military photos that's what we were doing initially okay the right the tyvan show says it goes like this this is my weapon this is my gun this is for killing this is for fun <laughs> <laughs> and james arsenal says who, who just said that you know who just made the dog turd face comment says you don't want to see my pics from that age Probably not. I mean, no, there's yeah. no way you could be as handsome as I am in, the, in these photos. I mean, shut up and play your guitar. Says uh, next show he shaves the beard live on the show. Any no. chance of that for charity? No, um, Will you no, do it man. For charity. I, I would really have to think uh, about how badly I wanted to get into an argument with my wife because I've tried to shave it and I've been told no. Oh, okay. No, the wife is the boss of that. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Plus, I really don't want my kid to scream every time he sees me because he's like, never. Who is that? Oh, he's never. How old is your son? Uh, yeah, it was uh, seven months now. Seven months. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so those natural uh, defenses will kick in. <laughs> oh, what you got? Let's see. Um, Can we um, see something really embarrassing? I don't think we've seen any really embarrassing stuff. Hey, I mean, these you got are, any naked baby pictures? Let's see what you do. Hold let's on. see. We got uh, that's uh, so Shuri would be whoop. These these guys were in my AIT class. So you got Shuri Myers and myself. That's you, Wade. That's that game. With a pair of uh, birth control glasses that we found on our way out. We were we were on weekend pass there. Oh, but, uh, this was you in college. 
No, no, no. This is AIT. So this was uh, oh. like my training for the job that I was going into. Uh, oh. And that is like Private Roberts. Oh, look at this. I mean, this is straight out of like Mad Magazine right here, dude. This one, <laughs> this is that dude on Mad Magazine. I have heard this. <laughs> uh, um, T Zapper says, uh, this is fun. Patrick is a good sport. Yeah. That's the thing that I think a lot of people... You know, some because you, you've got like a kind of uh, aura I've got, I've or whatever. I've got some haters, man. I've got well, some people, haters. Yeah, people think you're not a good sport, but this is like the third time you've done the show. I don't know who's come back on this much on the show other than, of course, like Walter, who is a regular member on the show, and uh, Kevin Dixie. I know you and Walter are always getting into it because I can see people in the chat trying to get Walter to come into the chat because they enjoy when you and Walter go back and forth. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. Well, he, he like, uh, so when I, I've told your, uh, you know, your audience this before, like one of the giant reasons that I write for TFB and no one else is because I cannot stand talking about politics. And I know um, I was at three, I was in um, Gun Food for Thought. I was 343 at Delta Bat, so... There's that. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I just flat out don't care about talking about politics. Like I pay attention to it. I'll vote, but I'm staying out of the conversation because it does nothing but get me angry. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's your genuine position. I don't know if people think you do that just because TFB has that policy yeah. that they don't talk politics. That's also your policy, right? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Um, because like I said, it just makes me mad. Um, there's, there's nothing enjoyable about it for me at all. Yeah. And that's um, and we respect that, and that's why when you come on, I try not to talk about it. One and two, we we sanctioned Walter and put Walter in the naughty box. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, okay, if, if he wants to have the conversation, then cool. You know, um, that's fine. You two can talk about it. I'll sit here and think of you know, and and like. Well, see, I'm kind of like you know, something. I'm kind of like the circus ringleader here, so it's no fun for me, man. <laughs> if I can't get people engaged. It's no fun for me, and Walter can't. Walter cannot help himself, and you know I, I'm not knocking him for his uh, stand on politics or anything like that. We're we're no, man, like, there's nothing wrong stuff. with it. Yeah, there's there's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, it's just one of those things. Like it it it, it makes me angry, and um, um, a good friend of mine, Josh, uh, with Brown Owls. Mm -hmm. once told me is like remove toxic people from your life. They've got no business being there. Um, and like, I really took that to heart. So like, I feel like that people who need to get, uh, angry about things, be it the news or, uh, current events or politics or whatever the case might be, whatever you cling to, to make you mad. Uh, if it turns you into an angry person, you've now started affecting my life and I don't want you in my life. Yeah. Kind of thing. I don't want to have the conversation. So a couple of comments here. Walter is now in the chat. He says uh, he's watching Wonder Woman. Can you can you comment on movies? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, I'm hoping that Wal Walter's got his pants on. Um, <laughs> um, I have no clue. I have no comment on that. Walter, do you have on your pants? Did you see this movie, Wonder Woman? No, um, no, I didn't. No. Yeah. Um, do you not want to see it? Guys, I, I just haven't gotten around to watching it. Um, for everybody in the comments or in the uh, in the chat, um, if you have Instagram, go look up Joshua Coburn and uh, give him a follow. That dude. Oh yeah. Will, yeah, will um, he, yeah. He's at Brownells, right? Hold on, let me go. Yeah, yeah. Right now. Yes. Yeah, um, he is. is he the marketing guy from Brownells? I'm trying to remember who Josh he is. He's the is social at. guy. Social media guy. Very cool. He's got um. That's he's got a lot of piercings and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he looks like a rough kind of dude and until you meet him you're like no, wow, he's a nice man. guy like, he's yeah. like the nicest man i've ever met um i can't say yeah. you know good enough things about the dude is his uh, um is he joshua coburn you're saying that that is him yeah um joshua so coburn i'm assuming it's cob joshua coburn let me see if that's him yeah that's him cool uh, dude yes he's got, a, he's got a ton of followers and i will be another one so i'm following him for my Hank Strange, and guess what? Since I control the Big Daddy Guns, I will go over to Big Daddy Guns as well and follow him on Big Daddy Guns because yeah. he's a cool dude. I like I like uh, Joshua. Oh uh, yeah, dude, he's an amazing guy. Like um, it, between he and Roy Hill and Ryan Rep, um, like 
they're really life altering yeah. people. If you spend enough time talking to them, you will eventually look at life entirely different than you did previously. And like, it didn't take long uh, for Josh to like alter how I looked at things. Mm -hmm. um, and you, after a while, you just become a happier person. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, is that, yeah, Roy Hill is my partner in crime at Brownells, but I do like Josh. I like everyone at Brownells. Um, I don't know if we're supposed to talk about this, but Brownells has an, an event coming up in about a week that I'm going to. And I will, I will be doing stuff once I'm out there. So like a week from now, you guys not, might not see me for a whole week. That's because I'm hanging out with Brownells dudes. Who knows what they're going to do to me? They won't even tell me what we're getting up to. So this is going to be interesting. All I hope is, is that they don't go deliverance on me. Yeah. You know. Do you know who else is going to be there? Uh, no. Are you going to be there? No. Who's going to no. be there? I don't know. Oh, I don't. I have no clue who else. Is, I know I'm going to be there. Uh, maybe Guns and Gear might be there. I'm not sure. Uh, hmm. I'm not really sure. I haven't seen the list of who else is going to be there, but it's going to be a bunch of um, us social media types. So Lawrence Lerwick says Walter has his big girl panties on right now. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Uh, people are talking about Wonder Woman. I did see the Wonder Woman movie. I don't know if I should ruin it for Walter if he's still watching it. You know, and someone back here in the chat said they want to see like uh, it might have been Lawrence Lerwick. They want to see uh, Beard versus Mohawk and figure out who's the best shot. You know, we'll see. I think probably I would probably say Patrick's probably a better shot than me, but you know, who knows? I'm going to be humble and say I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, and also it depends on it. You know, but depends uh, on conditions. Was, uh, what you're shooting. I, I was shooting a Glock 17 with uh, XS sights, new uh, F8 sights at 135 yards yesterday. So. Um, yeah. I See, here's the thing. So, you know, Patrick has to upgrade every single Glock. I run my Glocks as they come, as God and Glock made them. I leave so, them. I was still going through the photos um, and found some kind of cool ones. Uh, I'm going to turn this monitor off, so we'll catch you there. Um, <laughs> so I did find. Ooh, my that is. Truck. Is that a Nissan? No, Toyota. Toyota. Yeah. Is that yeah, a Tacoma? A Toyota. No, that's a, that's a pickup. That's a Toyota pickup. Oh, pickup. Um, you mean like a Hilux? Not really. Just a Toyota. Uh, no. So same same model as the Hilux, but yeah, like yeah. Uh, basically. So that was that was what I learned how to drive on, and then I found a photo of me and my little brother. This uh, this the little brother that passed away uh, that uh -huh. was killed in a bee attack. Um, in 2011, oh. but that's he's in he's a senior in high school, and I was about to go off to uh, basic training. Mm -hmm. And then uh, little soldier Patrick. Let's see here. Oh wow! How old are you here? Uh, 19, eight, 18. 18. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 18 and like 150 pounds. Yeah. So you're you 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 lost your younger brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was killed in a V-bit attack in uh, 2011. Wow. What's a V-bit? <clears throat> uh, vehicle born IED. So uh, oh. it, you know, it, it was basically a, a car with uh, a bunch of mortar shells in it. Uh, mm -hmm. They rammed the gate, and then once they couldn't breach the gate, they detonated it. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I know I've seen you. Um, you know I don't know if you you know if it's like a touchy subject, so I don't want to push it. Yeah, and no, you talk about it. Yeah, let me see that. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, he was killed uh, August twenty seventh, twenty eleven. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, I have had people ask me what the bracelet's about, and that's what it is about. Uh, yeah. Right. Every day it reminds me of him. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show you this last photo and then put these away. But uh, I committed a no-no when I was <laughs> in advanced uh, individual training, uh, and that was put on my, my drill sergeant's hat. Oh. My drill sergeant's hat. Uh-oh. Um, that, that was a huge no-no. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah. The, Did you get uh, in any kind of trouble for that? No, no. Uh, until now, no one has known that this picture existed except for my roommate in AIT. Wow. Okay. Um, that might be the thumbnail. <laughs> that might be the so, thumbnail. Tonight. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll get a... Uh, a <laughs> see, let's move it to where there's no glare here. Uh, wow, look at that. But yeah, so... And he never found out you put on his uh, hat. No, no, no. Because you wouldn't be uh, here right now. <laughs> I, I would have been in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. You know, you know I, I like a little bit. Um, yeah. But that, that is good fun. Um, yeah. What happened was uh, the, the drill sergeant came up there to, to uh, rectify an issue. Uh, we, we were being idiots and, uh, you know, dumb privates. And... Uh, he took his hat off and was walking up and down the hallways yelling at people. And uh, when he turned his back and was down walking away, uh, I grabbed the hat, put it on, and then, um, wow. you know, had my buddy take a photo of the Polaroid while we were getting in trouble. Um, a lot of that goes on. I know some of that was in the news today that I think at one of the – I think it was in Florida at one of the um, – I think it was at a, a military hospital that some, not nurses, but some, some people that are working there that are, um, that are in the service, they were taking pictures with babies, with a baby that was just born. You know, they were like giving the baby the finger and doing a whole bunch of, you know, disgusting stuff. Okay, um, so that's, that's slightly different than putting a hat on. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, putting on the hat, no, that's cool. It's cool because your ass got away with that. <laughs> yeah. It's if, been over uh, ten years since that photo was taken, yeah. and uh, and if he ever sees that, is I don't know if he's still around, but if he ever I, he was he was a giant vagina of a man, so yeah, uh, he I might hunt you down. <laughs> yeah, you know, so and you don't mind if, talking to. Yeah, if we make that the thumbnail, is that a problem? No, no, yeah, no, go for it, go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So okay, Dead Enders wants to oh. know if there's any chance of you doing some full metal car reviews in the future. I mean, maybe, um, maybe yeah. I can't really say I, it's not on my t list. Uh, there's nothing interesting about the full metal cars. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I tend to like avoid them. I, I don't request them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I, I don't go out of my way to get them. Uh, and with, with the, the Glock 43 hitting the market, like because this thing exists, there is literally no reason for me to, go pick up a car CM or PM nine any longer. Like this right here is better. Yeah. Um, in well, so that's the possible way. Right. So that's the debate we promised to have. So yeah, you want to have this 1911 it. versus yeah. um, Glock right, debate so and why everyone is wrong. Let's start it off with, um, I want the guys in the chat to give me a couple of reasons on why they think the 1911 still has a place as a self-defense carry gun, like something that you go to, something that is a choice that you make with your brain. Um, <laughs> yeah, so anyone to choose in that over something more functional like a Glock. Yeah, I know. It, this, is gonna be, this is going to be tough because both of we're both Glock guys. So let's start there. I do have. Uh, I think I have at least probably one 1911 right now. Um, I have which, one, and it's a piece yeah. of crap. Uh, which one do you have? I've got a uh, para ordnance like P16, which is junk. Okay, I have the um, I have the polymer one that American Tactical Imports made. That is also terrible. Um, Bravo, sir. Yeah. So I thought, hey, I that's like cool. Sort of like, I, yeah, we're like bad 1911 brothers. Yeah, it's double stacked. <laughs> I like a double stack 1911. That. Uh, like 1911 officiados don't like um, a double stack 1911, but I do. They're already wrong, just like the ones that don't like double stack are doubly yeah. wrong. Yeah, so that's that's the kind of thing that I'm into. Um, so all the 1911 people out there, what was the question, Patrick? Why do you think 1911s are so awesome compared to, you know? Yes, exactly. Um, you know, I, I, why would you, like, choose a 1911 for a... Uh, a daily carry gun. Why? Why would that be your go-to gun for defense? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Or home defense or whatever. Why yeah. would you choose that? Now, can I, let me go a little further. Why would you even walk into a gun store and buy a 1911 for any reason other than 
oh, I'm going to buy this 1911 just to, as a collector's thing, and put mm -hmm. it... <laughs> <laughs> and, you know. You've got a couple of reasons you would buy 1911. One, nostalgia. Two, you know, adding something different to your collection. Three, mm -hmm. competition is a legitimate reason. Uh, okay. um, you know, and that's it. That's all of the reasons. There are yeah. no more reasons. Yeah. So yeah. let us know I what see people, the reasons are. Yeah. So Rod M2C says, I love my 1911. You know, that you all, you guys always say that, but you can't give me, like, factual reasons. Yeah, so Rod, tell us, okay, so Rod, I think that's that's my buddy Rod, and uh, he says he loves his 1911. Do you, here's the question, Rod, do you carry your 1911? Do you conceal carry your 1911? And we want to know what is it? Which one is it? Is it like a Commander edition? What do you think about the Commander ones? Yeah, we have to see what the, I think there's some double stack Commander ones, but I can't remember. So... Let us know Chris what it B. is. Chris B says that he won a lot of competitions with his para build that he built before para was making pull guns, Springfield top half, uh, and he beat people using locks. Well, yes, you know, you are, if you shoot, you're going to outshoot somebody that owns a Glock. Um, not necessarily because the gun's better, because, I mean, it's not. Um, if you built your own 1911, you're probably going to outshoot the dude that went to the store and just bought one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's no different than if you were shooting a custom bolt gun, you're probably going to outshoot the dude that showed up to the range with a Ruger precision rifle. Yeah. Now, yeah, we're giving some time. That's why we're not, you know, and since both of us here, we're kind of like on the side of being Glock guys, but um, we're giving people ch a chance here to respond and tell us why before we get into stuff, uh, you know, or more specifically Patrick. I will probably chime in. Brian says, uh, one reason a girl will see your overpriced Nighthawk 1911 and will talk to you because she thinks you have money. Um, Wrong. Yeah. He, because, he's joking. Yeah, he's joking. Yeah. He's been facetious, obviously. No, no. Yeah, yeah, obviously. But I'm still going to tell him he's wrong. Oh. <laughs> because there's one dude that's going to read that. It's going to be like, man, you know what? He's on to something there. I better go buy a, 19, you know, a Nighthawk. Maybe I'll get laid. Uh, in this There's gun world, dude. are you 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 would have to maybe be gay, and that would have to be another dude. I'm not saying there's not women in the gun world, but they don't give a shit about your gun at the range, <laughs> right? Or I don't know. Let's see. Um, so you carry an EMP and an alien gear holster every day, All right? So guys, I'm going to ask you. I, I understand if you carry a gun and you're passionate about it. Awesome, really happy for you. Don't just tell me what you're carrying it and that you carry it every day, or don't tell me that you like 1911s. Tell me why. Unless you can give me some empirical data, like we can't have this conversation. Unless you can give me a point to talk about, other than you like something, like we can't go anywhere in this conversation, and we'll go back to talking about micro machines. Yeah, someone. I think that's fair. Yeah, let me see here. Someone, I, I missed something. Someone was talking about being an MP because the comments yeah. are coming in. So I'm trying to find. Yeah, I'm reading it. Oh, okay. What was the MP comment? Uh, yeah, he just carried one as an MP, um, and then he did something else. Yeah. Um, that's... Okay, here's one. Okay. Here's here's something. The 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 Tyvan show or Tivan or Tavan Tyvan Tavan. Okay. Um, I say um, Tyvan. I say Tyvan. The Tyvan show. Uh, or th Tyvan. that dude with the check mark. Uh, you should never own a Glock any or any handgun with a plastic lower. Because plastic breaks. So I mean, obviously, I've made a sentence um, coherent. Um, <laughs> but oh yeah, okay. So let, let's be real here, man. Like, um, so if I break this gun, this 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 receiver here is like a hundred and fifty bucks to replace. You know? Have you ever broken uh, a Glock lower? No. Uh, yeah, I've I've tra I trained with mine. I do like pistol classes and all that kind of stuff. I've never mm. even seen one broken. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. Like what I've seen the ones. Fail. Tyvin, okay, so Tyvin, you're a 1911 guy. You need to tell us. I don't know whether or not Tyvin can actually come on this show if you want to have someone here argue the the 1911 point. So I'm guessing Tyvin is a 1911 guy. I didn't know that. Apparently, yeah. Freeze yeah. a lower and put another in an oven. That 
both out and drop it from six feet. One will break, the other will bend. And I don't see how that's like a valid point as to why a, a, a 1911 is superior to a Glock because, I mean, realistically, like it, it's not going to break because you put it in a freezer. In fact, the Glock 17 is the issue weapon for like the Arctic Rangers. Yeah, I don't know where Tyvon oh. saw that. I don't know if he saw that on a YouTube. Tyvon's a YouTube guy, by the way. He's a he's a YouTube dude, um, former military guy like you. I think he was in the army. Uh, Papa's play says because I shoot the 1911 better than the Glock. Because you know what happens? There's lots of people out there who 1911s have basically maimed their hand, and their hand is now handicapped and cannot fit into a Glock <laughs> properly. No, 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 no. It, it, the issue is that nobody has taken the time to explain to them why the Glock grip angle is kind of preferable, even if you have to get used to it. So what nobody takes into account, they, they always, and, and I hear this every time, I don't shoot a Glock because I don't like, when I pull it up, it's pointing up into the sky. Well, what you're, what you're forced to do with this is you break your wrists over in order to get it on you know, on target, right? Mm -hmm. Like your, your wrists are, are past, they're broken forward. So that movement there of getting the Glock on target is actually going to make you shoot flatter with a Glock just because the grip angle forces you to break your wrists over that center, you know, that like imaginary line. Yeah. It's going to help you re control the recoil better yeah. than a 1911. Yeah, so Rod says he shoots better with his 1911. So he personally shoots yeah. better with his 1911, I'm assuming. Uh, Safety well, Harbor, that's Walter. Yeah. Walter says uh, 762 Takarev rules. <laughs> oh, boy. That's a whole other argument, Walter, that only you would be making. Why Walter actually does EDC carry a Takarev. <laughs> I've seen him do it. I, I, I feel like I can envision him right now cleaning <laughs> his Takarev with no pants on, watching Wonder Woman. Yes, in his, uh, <laughs> exactly. <in> his <laughs> you know, I um, think that that's because he has a lot of Takarev ammo, so whatever. Um, so Tony London, I'm going to allow his comment. He says Glocks never die. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, so, okay, so wow. Matt J says if Glocks, Patrick, if you think Glocks are so good, why do you modify them all? I think that's a good question. That's a valid nothing's, question, Patrick. Nothing's perfect. Nothing's perfect. Everything can be just a little bit better. There's always a better solution, no matter what it might be. Um, you know what? I'm going to say that you're totally wrong there. This is perfect. Not this. Not the 5, not the Gen 5 necessarily. I've never shot it, but the Glock is perfect. You, you are broken. You are broken. <laughs> you need to modify yourself. <laughs> I, I like that guy who said, you know, you don't have to modify it. But I know you like my – you know what? My brother's like you too, man. He buys all these Glocks and then modifies the crap out of them and then is constantly telling me how some – like he, he – um, I don't know for sure. But my brother does stuff like he will buy a Glock 17, right, and then chop this down. Mm -hmm. Chop this yeah. in half so he can conceal carry it, you know. Yeah, why not? Yeah, he'll do stuff like I don't know if it's the 17 or whatever you'll get. He'll get he'll change the slide and get like a 45 slide and do some kind of craziness to it. You know, uh, I'm pretty sure he's done trigger jobs and all kinds of stuff. And then he's like, oh, it's, it's not exactly working. You know, and then he it becomes a um, domino effect of modifying. Oh, here we go. Here I mean, comes a modified Glock. So here we go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, actually, my other one is in the mail. Actually, uh, so it's it's kind of this is the one I've got on hand. Um, no, my my point is, it's like no matter how good something is, it can always be better. Um, like the Magwell on a stock Gen Four is perfectly fine. Like it's acceptable. It will work just fine. But something a little bit more opened up, like the Raven Magwell, might be better. Red Dot, definitely better. Then no red dot. Forward slide serrations better than no forward slide serrations. Like it, it, it's 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 a good starting point. Is, is yeah. my point? It, it's like they're not perfect right from the factory. They are a perfect starting point. They're cheap enough to um, you know allow you to throw a little bit of money on it to get it to right where you need. Um, I'm not really uh, knocking you. I just had to hit you with something. 
Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just uh, me and you. But you know what? Here, I, I see Glocks. I see Glocks a lot, like Porsches, right? So they are dudes that will buy a Porsche and won't change shit. And then there's the guys that get Porsches and modify the living crap out of them. And, you know, that's personal preference. But the thing it has to tell you is that, you know, these are very popular guns and there's lots of modifications to them, although there was a comment here about modifications and the Glock and the 1911 that I'm going to bring up in a second. 904 Outdoor says, I have seen a Gen 5 Magwell break with a speed reload in a class with Rob Pincus. I don't know why they made the Magwell so thin on the Gen 5. You didn't, so Pink, Pincus is a friend of mine. Um, so that's thin? What, what, class, what, what class was this and where was it? Yeah, when did this happen? That's, I guess I'm going that to text him right thing. now. Yeah, ask Pincus if he broke the Magwell. So give, give so. me some more information on that, please. Uh, yeah. So 904, we want we want to know where you're coming from. Um, so let me go back here. I'm going to try to get the guy. Okay, so Marky Mark 526 says, I think I see more 1911s customized than Glocks. Hmm, that's a good question. What is what is customized more, in your opinion? Um, have I found 1911s? Less reliable than glass. What? Huh? I'm missing. <laughs> what was the question? Sorry. Um. I. Oh. Uh, uh, Marky Mark says I think I see more 1911s customized than Glocks. So who get? Which uh, one? What? Yeah. What do you think gets customized more? 1911s or Glocks? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, like that's going to be a tough question to answer. Uh, they probably it's probably like 50 50. Data. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say it's 50-50 because, yes, there's lots of customized 1911s. Dudes build 1911s from scratch or from 80 percenters or what have you. People are doing that with Glocks. There's tons of – I mean, there's like a whole industry. Glock sparked a whole cottage industry of people, you know, making upgraded Glocks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, same thing with 1911s. I will say that um, even though there's some expensive Glocks out there, 1911s hold the prize with the when it comes to expensive guns because companies make really ridiculously expensive 1911s. Um, the most expensive 1911 that I have ever seen with mine own two eyes was two and a half million dollars. <laughs> I haven't seen a Glock that expensive yet. <laughs> Although I've seen some expensive ones, but that's you know that was from Cabot Guns with their with the. Um, the uh, what was it meteorite twin 1911s with special knives also made yeah. out of the meteorite that they wouldn't let anyone touch. So, <laughs> um, um, so I'm on Rob Pincus's page and I'm not seeing anything. Yeah. Okay, so 904 says he's pretty sure it was Rob Pincus or Mike Seeklander, one of them. Pretty sure Pincus. Okay, you better you better send us send send us some kind of link. We want to see. We want to know. Yeah, I mean, I'm on it because yeah, that I think that would have gone kind of viral. I, I'm pretty certain. Like, and if it hasn't, like, I'm going to be talking about it on TFB like quickly if that happens to be the case. But like, I'm back. Um, yeah. Um, so Rod says exactly the meteorite gun. Um, I mean, you know, this. I'm not. I like some 1911s, you know, and the Cabot Guns ones. I like them when, whenever I've actually handled one, which they don't let you even touch those things at the shows. They've got like, you know, nice, nice glassy slides, I guess. Uh, Shut up and play your guitar. It says take a stock 1911 like a Colt government model against a Glock 21 stock and see which one takes a dump first. So uh, it's gonna be the 1911. Um, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, that's easy. That's easy. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, I've seen people come to training classes, like pistol training classes with 1911s, and they wind up having to either go buy a Glock from some nearby <laughs> store, or like the instructor has to give them one of his backup Glocks, or someone in the, in the class has to like give his backup Glock or something like that. So when I go to a person. class, I actually take like three extra Glocks in my range yeah. bag just to loan to people. <laughs> yeah. I usually take an extra Glock. So if I go to a class, I'll take like a 17 and a 19, but I usually train with the 19. Never had to go to the 17 because I don't have any problems with it. Uh, 
Yeah, Chris I Polis mean. says someone disliked this video. You know, I guess we guessed that. There's probably someone out there who always goes and dislikes. They're jealous um, of my, my good looks. Yeah, Tyvin Show is reminding everyone to share the podcast and click the thumbs up button. Uh, we've got some uh, Joe Carpenter's going to bed. Good night, you sweet prince. <laughs> good night, Joe. <laughs> so, sweet um, dreams, sir. Sweet yeah. dreams. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> um, so Brian says he'll never understand a two to three thousand dollar Glock. What do you, what do you say about that? Uh, salience and agency guns, man. Like, well, this is a three thousand dollar Glock. Yeah, that is actually. <laughs> so well, I mean, worth it. it. Shoots. Yeah, like I mean, it's it's they're all functional upgrades. You know, if you're working on something that is. Uh, prettier than the next Glock, then I don't really care mm -hmm. uh, uh, for that personally. But it's got to be a functional upgrade, and this is that's what this is. This is all functional stuff. Yeah. Um, and it, like realistically, all the money is in the labor to cut the slide and the RMR. Um, that's that's where all the money's at. And really. does that money do something for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have a. A red dot on here. I mean, like that—that that absolutely does something. Yes, I know you had this video. What was the conclusion? I think you had like a video called Five Reasons Why You Should Consider a Red Dot." Yes. Yeah. What's? Can you give us the brief version of that? Of course, we want everyone to go watch the video, but what's your five um, reasons I mean, since you're on that well, right it's, now? It's 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 better. Hold it right there, right there. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Yeah, there you go. You can see the dot, kind of. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. It, it promotes a more head-up shooting stance, so the gun comes up and you present it like this. You know, like you're standing upright. You can see more stuff. You can move faster. It's just all around better. Like everything that you do with iron sights, you will always do better with a red dot. But you do have to practice like drawing that firearm, presenting that firearm. Like that's something that needs to be something you practice. You can't just take it to the range and expect to be better with a red dot right out of the box. It takes work to get there. Yeah, this is so no different than going from a – and we'll use motorcycle speak. Um, this is no different than like learning to ride a motorcycle on a Ninja 250 and then jumping on an R1. Mm -hmm. No different. Um like so, you need to acclimate yourself to the bigger bike. You've got more uh, more power with the the leader bike over the 250. Not necessarily, it's not necessarily the case with the RMR, but it's it's a totally different animal. It's it's a race gun at that point. Like that is the stuff that they use on race guns. It can also be used on a fighting gun, but it's a race gun. Um, you know, for the practical purposes of uh, you know the conversation, but. Like expecting to be as good with a red dot as you were with irons immediately is insane. Give yourself a thousand rounds, and um, you know, over like a couple of range trips, um, you know, a thousand fifteen hundred rounds, and then tell me that you're not faster. Go do a couple hundred uh, dry fire presentations um, in your garage over a couple of weeks, and then tell me that you're not faster out of a holster with a dot than without. So what's the downsides? There has to be some kind of downside to the red dot. I'm, they're expensive. Okay. What about <laughs> yeah, if about the battery's it. dead? Change it once a year. It's not a problem. And yeah. if the battery is dead, you have backup iron sights. So. Yeah. Okay. So you can co-witness or just yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if what, you look at this, mm -hmm. like yeah, I, I I do have um, iron sights on this. Mm-hmm. So you do have, um, you know, backup. So you got. Sight. So you would have to put in the raised ones, right? I'm taking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they are suppressor height sights. Mm -hmm. So you know, I mean. By the way, yeah, 904 is looking for that video, so he says, "Give him a few minutes." So, uh, what recommendations do you have for red dots? Do you have any? Um, like, if you have a 22 pistol, buy like a Vortex Venom, and then um, you know, roll with that. You know. Like get out there, practice shooting with a Vortex Venom on a 2245 uh, or a Mark III or whatever your 22 uh, platform is. Then maybe take a look at a Clock MOS or an MMP Core series and take that Venom, put it onto that. Um, 
and then by the time you like kill that uh, vortex venom, you'll be ready to take the next step, which is like a proper arm or, or a proper delta point with proper mounting. Okay. Um, so go. I know. I know you're aching to go to that sandwich here. So I'll read this. Go ahead. You can. <laughs> so uh, no, no. Okay. Well, it doesn't help if you roar when you do it. <laughs> so um, here, let me just lock it on me. Okay. So Nolan, uh, Alyssa says. Um, I think it's Nolan Aliasis. So anyway, the pro problem is it takes more work to make a reliable 1911 than it does to make a reliable Glock. The 1911 design is over-engineered in some aspects. So mm, no, not over. Um, yeah, not I mean, I think if you yeah, if you get a Glock out of the box and a 1911 out of the box, unless it's a terribly made 1911, they they both should just work. You know, I think it's you. You personally, as a person, may have to do work. Um, but yes, once you start my, my my opinion is once you start modifying, then you're getting into all of that, right? You can get into a whole quagmire of what's going on. But I would probably say eh, it's probably going to be easier to figure out what's up with the 1911 over the Glock because this is really um, this is I thought I locked it on me. This is really even though this is very simple, there's a lot of engineering and design that goes into this and little things like the weight oh, of the no, slide no, no, and no, all no, that. You no, can no, 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 Whoa, whoa, In my whoa, whoa. opinion. Uh oh. Okay. So don't lie to yourself. Gaston Glock coming up with that design was purely by accident. The oh, dude boy. wasn't some genius. It was like a holy shit, I stumbled onto the holy grail kind of thing. Like it's not something he had been developing for years. And that's not and that's not genius. Of a gun. That's not genius. Didn't Einstein say that simplicity is gen is the definition of genius or some such? Then why did <laughs> Why did he not produce any other design? Why is that the only design he's ever put out? Uh, I, I don't know. That's a good. That's a good yeah. one. I know that. I know the carbine is out there. That's, that's my <laughs> only retort to that. <laughs> and that's just a cause Does trouble. Mean he came up with it. Doesn't maybe mean, mean he came. Up with it. The only other thing that I'm aware of him, of him designing are um, field knives and shower curtain uh, rods or shower rods. Yeah, but listen, some dudes get it right the first time. That's not okay. Some people have to fish around and do all kinds of stuff to get to get a really cool design and do perfections or whatever. But sometimes you come yeah. up with, you know. It's just like, like songs. Browning, it's just like musicians, man. There's a lot of dudes. Browning, Pedersen, uh, I mean, there's a couple of other dudes that had like several really well thought out designs. This is like saying Mikhail Kalashnikov was the greatest firearms designer on the planet. No, I would never say that. I had that argument with Walter. I don't know if Walter is still in the thing, but I had that argument with him, I think, yesterday, because he thinks Kalashnikov is like the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I no. personally don't think so. I, I'm not I'm not knocking Kalashnikov. I'm not knocking AK dudes. But Kalashnikov, one, I think Jack idea jacked, you know. So I, yeah, I I'm, not, I'm not going down that road. <laughs> but uh, two, I don't really think. And he, what did he didn't come up with much else after that, you know? So whatevs. Um, but I'm Rod not. Rod M2C asks if a Glock 1911 exists. Um, it does not. There is a very, very good fake out there, though. Mm -hmm. No, there's a real gun, uh, Nolan. There's. It's not just a Photoshop job. There's a real gun that is very close to what those photoshops look like what what are we talking about what's the real gun it's just a 1911 um it, it's a 1911 uh, caspian build that somebody um like engraved with all the glock markings uh hmm. shut up and play your guitar says kalishnikov rules stoner drools you take dumps in pools i added that i added that for her. shut up and play I, your guitar i feel as though it was uh, uh you know, a, a good play to add that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, all right. Glock so. field shovels. <laughs> uh, Mike Bryan says, you guys are fishing for thumbs downs. So much controversy. And then someone in there says XD. <laughs> I'm not going down that path. I only buy an XD because it's American. <laughs> Um, I know a lot of law enforcement dudes that like XDs. <laughs> so how many times have you say, heard somebody say, "I bought an XD because it was it's made in America"? Um, I think I've heard that. Yes, I have heard that. <laughs> Is it? 
No. Yeah, I don't think so. It's Croatian. <laughs> yeah. But I think I've heard people say that, believe it or not. Um, Eric Smith says, I liked my grandpa's 1911 until I had to clean it. That is a that's huge a That's a huge difference, I guess, with the 1911. I know some people can break down a 1911 in their sleep, you know, and do all kinds of craziness and put it back together. Um, yeah, 1911s are notoriously difficult to put back. If you don't know what you're doing, you know. I no, it's, I I, I hate no. take I hate cleaning 1911s also. No, so what else? No, no, it's hard to take apart and put together. I'm not I'm not saying it's impossible, but come on, man. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm we're I'm not telling you I'm not telling you it's impossible, but it's not as easy as okay, pull the trigger and pull that off. It's not that easy. So okay, hold one. Oh boy, now oh you're going to get a 1911. Let's see. You cut out there. I don't know what you, what you said. No, I said, okay, so you, are you going to get a 1911? Is that what you're up to? Yeah. Okay, what is this? This is that crappy para that, like, oh, the, okay, the one that I you ended have. Up with. Okay. So, obviously is this one of the easy ones to take down that it doesn't have? No. Like a, okay. No, 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 no. I mean, it's no different than any other 1911. Um, it's just as stupid as all the rest. So, like you depress that. Yeah, you turn it. With my, I can't use my fingernail though. Oh, do you have to get a tool? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying I'm using a magazine. Oh, uh huh. That's technically a tool at this point. And it's also an NFA item if used incorrectly. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just trying to throw you off. <laughs> See, of course, I, I would say, I just, yeah, no. I think I just saw your dog come. <laughs> okay, something went flying. You don't have your eye protection on. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's not that bad. Like, this is a really bad example because it's a really shitty 1911. No, but, no, I don't want to hear that now. <laughs> no, this is a really, uh, really bad example. <laughs> Uh, I hate this stupid thing. Shout out to Kool Aid Man who come comes in. Uh, Safety Harbor. Walter says he loves Amazons. I, okay. I, I, yeah. Okay. I agree with that. I like Amazons also. I also like pygmies. That's why I married Lola. There you go. Let's see when she hears that one. I don't know. I might I, get I might get smacked in the back of the head in a second. <laughs> I feel like we're dangerously tra you know, like treading <laughs> towards racism at this point. Somehow, um, I don't know. I feel well, uh, I know we're not supposed to get that's racist in the background. And we're no, not I'm supposed gonna... to get into this, but you know, technically, you are protected because you know, according to the snowflakes, I can't be racist. So there you go. Uh, okay, so you took that apart. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Okay, you took it apart. Congratulations to you. Put it back together. Let's see. What happened to that part that went flying? Oh, okay. Didn't go. Damn it. I was hoping that went really, really far. <laughs> um, I'm going to enjoy my hamburger while I'm putting this back together. <laughs> Shut up and play your guitar, says um, uh, it should say horse shit on the side of that 1911. <laughs> Say again? He says, shut up and play your guitar. Says it should say horse shit on the side of that 1911. I guess oh, it yeah, says. No, no, it, it does. It does. It's right there. Oh, <laughs> para. <laughs> what yeah, did you. No, was this expensive? No, probably not, right? No, 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 no. This is one of the deployment guns that they offered for, um, you know, soldiers. Yeah. So they uh, during, during Operation Iraqi Freedom and uh, Enduring Freedom. SIG and Bushmaster and a bunch of other companies offered um, like commemorative guns. Yeah. Greg 98K um, says, I field stripped 10 Glocks already. Probably, yeah. And let's, let's try to not lose my eye here. Yeah, please. You know, we don't want like an under job injury. Does, does TFB consider the, you, you on the clock right now? <laughs> nope. God bless it. Stupid. This is why I prefer. What are you doing? Oh, God. Don't destroy the camera. Hey. That's like, okay, there you go. Okay. Jag it. Don't you jag it. Okay, cool. Hey. It works. Very good. <laughs> it still sucks. Yeah. 
Um, so it looks like Hank Strange said you bastard in there, but that's not me. That's Lola. I guess Lola's logged in as me or something like that. And she goes, you bastard. Um, Brian, this says, this is a retort to Patrick's point. Oh, hold on. I got you locked. Hold on. Uh, Brian says, a retort to Patrick's point about expensive Glock. Spend your money how you wish. You'd be hard pressed to convince me a two to three thousand provides a three to three to five hundred percent increase in performance that you spent on the weapon. No, there is a point of diminishing returns, absolutely. But like two to three thousand dollars is just the reality when you're talking about a quality red dot, a quality milling job, mm -hmm. quality refinishing, a quality yeah. barrel. Like um, when you're buying good parts, <laughs> it costs money. You can yeah. be a cheap bastard and, like, say I have all of the boxes checked and, like, your gun actually shoot worse after being modified. Right. Shut Up and Play says, I did a tune-up on my 69 Camaro faster. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> E-Rock says, breaking news, best pistol ever made, a high point. <laughs> I have one of those. I would ag agree as long as you don't want to take it apart. Yeah. Um... So I think there's a bunch of there's a bunch of comments in here that I have not gotten to. Lots I have of people. I've not looked at them in a while. Yeah, I'm um, I'm, I'm I'm going through Mike Seeklander's um, Instagram. I'm still not seeing anything about this mythical Glock Magwell breaking. Yeah, I haven't heard back from 904 Outdoors, so he better. I'm hope. calling him out. I yeah. think I think he's drinking um whatever he's drinking. It, it's, yeah, we want to see. We want to find. Are wrong. Yeah. We want, we want to see evidence on this. So to get back to what we were debating here, I, have we answered this? Have we answered the question in the debate of what's better? A 1911 the, question, the, question, the question was answered before it was asked. Mm -hmm. Like we already knew that the, the Glock was better before we even started this conversation. Yeah. I'm not, you know, listen, I'm not knocking dudes for their 1911s and all that kind of stuff. There's a bunch of things we could talk about, like magazine capacity and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, and there's nothing wrong if, if you're not evil if you have a 1911. We all probably have some kind of 1911 in our safes if you're a gun guy, right? It's like yeah. car. It's like every car guy. What is the what is the car that every car guy has to have? Is it a Fiat? There's one of those cars that, like, you know, they say every car guy. A Miata. Yeah, it was something. That, I think it's a Fiat or one of those. It's one of those Italian cars. that like every car guy should have this. Alpha. Because, Alpha there you go. It's an Alpha. Alpha. And yeah. that that that's applicable only to the UK market. But um, yeah, like, I don't know. Americans would have forgotten about Alphas unless they were around in the 80s. We did have Alphas in America in the 80s. I forget you know. how old you are. Yeah. Um, remember KRS One? I love. I grab a beer, but never in the ride. You know. I love to stare my Alfa Romeo from here to there. You probably never heard that. Too young. No, no, Do you even know who KRS One is? Who? There you go. Never heard of KRS One. He's a rapper. You're probably not even into rap. Who? Well, you're into <laughs> exactly. There you go. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think it's one of those things. Hey, everyone should have one. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, um, so I'm 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 gonna be the guy that says I'm calling BS on the broken Gen Five. Yeah, we gotta see that. We gotta see that. We gotta see pictures or something like that. Nine oh five, whatever it is, is wrong. <laughs> Nine oh four. Bring it on, Steve. We wanna see what you got. You see know. Here. So um, I know that people asked us about this before. Um, the Maxim yeah. 50. We were talking about this last night. Folks wanted to us yeah. talk about the Maxim 50. I think Mike Bryant says that it's not available in all states after all. No. Um, yeah. They, they, uh, well, mm, so um, there have been some like questions about the legality of it, um, and they are suspending sales. So they've put the orders on hold, refunded the money for the sales, that were made to people that live in these areas that it's kind of in question about. Okay. So, I know that their site was getting shut down or people were having problems because there was yeah, so many people trying to get on. It was just getting hammered. Yeah. So wh what do you think overall about the Maxim 50? Let's, uh, let's really I think start it's a there. Cool, um, I think it's a cool um, idea, man. Like I think that it's really an outside the box look at suppressors. 
and it brings up a really interesting question, you know. Uh, it po it, I guess it doesn't necessarily um, bring up an interesting question. It really brings to light how stupid the conversation is about um, the the ATF or the NFA registry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, did you have that. any like advanced um, access to this? No. Okay. No, a friend of mine works for South Chico. Um, like I, I saw pictures of it a couple of days before. I've had some conversations with him about the project while it was still in development, but that's about it. Okay. Can you tell us who's your buddy at Silent Circle or? I no. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> when they're talking to me about stuff they shouldn't be talking to me about, I probably am not going to. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's a cool thing that they did. I know some people think it's gimmicky. I think lots of guys out there like the, the you know there's people who don't like the idea of doing all the paperwork, having the government in their business, et cetera, et cetera. So even though it's problematic in some states, we're looking we're looking at Patrick looking at uh, I have no idea what that is. Is it a is CZ? I want to say no. Um, I'm gonna hold it back here. See if anybody gets it. Hmm. Uh, Walter might get it. He might have some kind of idea. Walter says he I... needs one of each for for the arc. Walter, can you tell us what this is? I feel like he probably won't be able to. Uh, is it a browning of some sort? Take a look at the magazine. Oh, there. okay. It looks uh, uh, Sigish. No. Nope. I have no clue. No, a high power? Nope. Okay. Um, Man, come on, guys. Let's see who's got it. Um, Paul, uh, let's see. Everyone's saying Browning high power. Chris B says hold still. CZ85? Nope. Smith & Wesson? Mm -mm. Mr. Holster says Tangfolio. Nope. Um, Tyvon Show says a 45. He just says 45. Don't know what that. No. Um, Model 47. Mm -mm. Some Eric Smith. Uh, Brian says Star. Nope. Okay. Um, do you have a prize here that you're giving away? <laughs> no. Uh, Colt 40. <laughs> no. Dead Ender says Colt 40. Beretta. Boss Hog. No, you guys are just uh, like taking a stab in the dark. Yeah, just, it's just yeah, exactly. We don't know. I don't know where. I don't know where Walter is. He has totally disappeared. I would like to to hear Walter's take on this to tell us what this gun is. Hold on, don't tell anyone. Oh, somebody is getting close there. But uh, Steyer, so uh, Feg CZ Steyer something. Uh, Exhale says a seven six two. Uh, you know. No, somebody got close. Let me. I'm gonna text Walter and see if he if he could tell us what it is. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, someone. Everyone's giving up at this point. <laughs> oh, here's Walter. Okay, Walter, he's on. What is it, Walter? What is this gun? I'm going to lock it in so that you could see it and tell us what it is. I know you you don't want to hold it up further than a certain di is this I wonder if this is a Lionheart or a Daewoo. Daewoo. It's not a Daewoo, right? Okay. Uh is it Israeli? No. Okay, so it's not an IWI Jericho. Steyer GB. No. F E G. Yeah. Ah. There's people are just like there's just lots of stuff coming up here at this point. Uh, uh no, no, not F E G. Not a F E G. Walter has no answer on this. He's scratching the big noggin. I can see I can see steam coming out of his ears right now, cartoon style. <laughs> as he's trying to figure it out. So Still okay. We got okay. Is it South African? What's the nope. country of origin? Is it Italian? Switzerland. Switzerland. Swiss. It's Swiss. Sphinx. Nah, close. Close. FNH close, close. something. Someone says it's Argentina. No, so it's Swiss. Swiss. It's Swiss, huh? Swiss. 
So, um, hmm, 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 hmm. Mike Ryan says he knows this gun. Okay, can you give us a hint? Give us a hint because at this point, is it a llama? No idea. It is not a llama. Uh, um, Boss so Hog my, wants to know, does Mac have one? <laughs> I, actually, probably not. Uh, <laughs> I, I know of about four of them in the U.S. Oh, wow. Okay. What's your hint? Give us some kind of It's not a high point. <laughs> Um, no, no. Sweden is the hints. Like that's the best. S A N S A N. Is it a Swiss Sig seventy five? Yeah. I'll tell you. It, it is the uh, great, 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 great. Is it great, World War One or two? Uh, post. Uh, post war. Sig so, two thousand. It's po it's post war. Post war. Um, AT eighty four. Hey! Holy okay, shit. so that's Screaming Skull Saloon. Yes. He says it's an AT-84. Walter is lost somewhere in the Stargate. We don't uh, we don't no. have any clue where's Walter. So what are we gonna give? We got we have to come up with something cool for Screaming uh, yeah, Skull I, Saloon. Have him uh, email me uh, his um, mailing address, and I'll dig through my big box of like swag from events and send some yeah. stuff. So there you go, Screaming Skull. Um, email Patrick, and um, your your email address is out there, right? Yeah, it's tfbpatrick at gmail.com. You can email me there. Uh, just drop me a line with your address, and I will send you some, like, swag that I want out of my home. Cool. So there you go. Now, um, so... 904 says, I just sent you a, a picture to Hank of a broken magazine from a Gen 5, but I can't find the broken magwell right now. I will look more later and send it to you. So that's not exactly the same thing, but here you go. Yeah, now, that's, it, that's on, now that would be, that would be on Magpul. Mag. Yeah, that would be, the, that would be no, on Magpul. No, that's a factory mag. Oh, okay. That's the factory mag. Oh, that's the Glock fact? Okay. Factory. Yeah, it's got the no high vis uh, lower. No, oh. man, like uh, that's that happens with like. Um, so there you go for anyone. Um, I, I could. No. I know I've got a magazine that looks like that where I've peeled the cover back. I actually think it might be my forty three mag. Now that I think about it. Yeah, I, I mean, I've I've had to trim mags. It's a known issue. It happens. Yeah. Um, Lola says, what can you tell us about the AT-84? I hear this. Um, <laughs> Mike Bryant so said, at, at 904, fake news. <laughs> okay, now Walter comes in. He says, is it a, is it a Swiss PE-57? No. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, here, here's my, uh, one of my carry mags, and you can see the, you know, plastic delaminating from the metal liner. It, it happens. Mm -hmm. Uh that's not a failure. It was, by the way, magazines are consumables, so who cares? Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, the AT-84, so this is actually a pre-B CZ-75 that was marked AT-84. Um, and it was supposed to be produced in Switzerland. They're going to do a domestically produced gun. Um, and they chose the CZ-75 design. Well... They came in with the the, the witness um, later, like so. They they set up a, a small small run of about five hundred to a thousand of these guys, and <clears throat> while they were doing the production of this, the uh, Tang Folio people came in and said, "Hey, we'll cut you a better deal on our design." So they abandoned the CZ seventy five and produced the Tang Folio design. Um, so there, as a result, there's very, very few of these um, pre-Bs marked ITM AT-84. Uh, you can see, right? Wow, that's really cool. There. How did you get your hands on it? Right there, you've got... Uh, Solothurn, Switzerland. Yep. Solothurn. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, this is actually a Century International Arms import. Wow, so you've had that, have you had that for a while? Uh, about a year. Hmm. Okay. So you found it used or something and? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it, it came from the Israel, Israeli uh, police trade-in. 
yeah. lots that were coming in about a year and a half ago. Right. That is very cool. I really I like that. That's very cool. Are you into bags? Let me. I've never asked you that before, but just as an aside here, are you into bags, like, like uh, tactical bags and stuff like that? I. Because every now, every now and then, people send me. They send me stuff to test, and Hazard Four sent me this, this bag, and I'm trying to remember what the hell it's called. So, uh, uh, TJ Blaze said it's like I said a POS. What is, what is that supposed to mean? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he's talking about. Is are you, is he talking about the AT seventy four? Maybe he's I'm not talking really about certain. that. So this bag yeah. is from Hazard Four. I'll have to ask Loda to tell me what it is. I'm going to be testing it. And you know what? I want to try out a new way of like testing bags or, and whatever to give people info on the bags. So here's a crazy idea that I came up with. I thought I'll run by you guys. Check this out. Can you see that? So, so what you're telling everyone is you want to fill your bag with a bunch of balls. Yes, I want to fill the bag with balls. You want your... <laughs> we want to do the balls test. <laughs> we, want to do, we, want to see, <laughs> we want to see how many balls. And these are like play balls. So these are the balls. See that? It says play balls. These are play balls that you can get. Uh, that people, people let their children play with these balls. So are you? Are you <laughs> is, I'm hoping that Hank's not going to let children play with his balls. Um, I'm not going to let children play with these balls, but children do play with these balls. But I'm not letting children play with these particular balls, or or mine, you know, uh, because you know these are for well, testing. I mean, those these are, balls those are, are those, for, those are your balls. Those are these your balls, balls are no, but these balls are for testing purposes, like. You know, these are T E yeah, but these are T and E balls. Yeah. Hank, I gotta say that's a really large ball sack. <laughs> yeah, it's a big it's a big bag of balls, and I wanna see how many of these can fit in there. So while we're well, talking about other so stuff <laughs> after after you put the balls into the I'm backpack, put, it, it, yeah. it becomes balls, a ball sack now, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> a ball sack, okay. ball pack, however you wanna put it. I'm gonna see how many balls. How many balls can we stuff in this? How many balls can you we know, stuff? You know what you could do is you could put one of those um, those tactical like balls things like the the, the Molly balls uh -huh. onto the Molly, <laughs> so you could like have a ball sack and like ball sack exception. <laughs> I'm sure people are getting a kick out of this right now. So yeah, while we talk about other stuff, we'll see how many balls can we stuff into the mouth of this backpack. I mean, so. any more than two is impressive, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of balls. We're not. I'm not even counting it. Wow. At some point, I will count how many and see how many we can get into here. While you and are fill uh, filling <laughs> your um, my, got, my you while I'm filling the sack with balls. Uh -huh. while, while while you are um, re <laughs> refilling your ball sack, um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about the new XS. F8 sites because I've got a set of them here. Uh, nobody has them yet, and I uh -huh. happen to have some. So okay, so yeah, let me lock this on you for a second. I don't want every, I don't want people to keep jumping back to my balls while you're talking about that. Go ahead. So I've got a set of the new F8 uh, sites from XS. We'll turn that just a touch. So you got our front sight here, and then a rear sight. Um, now this is their first go at a like. Orange front blade, um, you know, notch rear. There's your sight picture there. Um, it's a, a pretty large departure uh, from what XS is normally doing, which is the uh, the express uh, sights, so the the big dot and standard dot stuff. Um, but I know that these aren't the finalized version for the SIGs. But it's pretty darn close. Okay, very cool, very cool. So uh, these should be out pretty soon, and they'll have um, Glock models as well as the Sig, obviously. Uh, you know, they're going to be making some changes. These are pre-production sites, so this is like a proof of concept. This is um, like ninety-five percent done. 
there still could be some changes made before they get to market. Um, so there's lots of comments here. I'm back. I will give you guys the ball count in a minute for anyone who wants to know. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Talk about the SIG. Go ahead. No, I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt you uh, talking no. about your balls. No, there's something going on with the SIG. Which SIG is this? I've totally missed what's happened. It's, I was uh, preoccupied with balls. Here, Lola, take the uh, – Lola, can you do me a favor and take this bag of balls from here? Just so that you know, like no one thinks I'm cheating. Harry, no, it's a question yeah. about those sites. Yeah. Oh, some people. Oh, there's a yeah. conversation going on about yeah. the site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, yeah, I'm sorry, I was distracted by. Uh, yeah, people want you to read. Yeah, people want you to read the comments so that they can know have, what. Because there's some comments there. So go ahead and I'm, read. Those. I'm sorry, I was I was really distracted by Lola handling your ball sack. Oh, uh, Lola, Lola, you miss you miss one of these balls. Here, grab this. Here you go. Grab the ball. Okay. Thanks, Lola. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Dead Enders. Dead Enders is saying, Lola, steer this train wreck, please. <laughs> um, Marky Mark says, Hank, put two bowling balls in the bag and then bounce it in front of a bungee cord. That will tell you if it's a good bag or not. Uh, someone says really the and then safe uh walter says the crazy train vanessa kitty says laugh out loud my dogs are laughing too <laughs> we can go tactical with the ball sack <laughs> there's a bunch of comments in here uh so there you go uh, wow. are you okay wow. <laughs> I, you I, know what? I, I hope no one is watching from tfb tv right i, I prob probably are they pro probably fired <laughs> You're gonna get you're gonna get some serious I'm, I, I guarantee you I already have an email from somebody asking me why I had a fifteen minute like monologue about Hank Strange's ball sack. Um, I think this is gonna become a snippet. <laughs> this is gonna wind up I mean, a snippet. Okay. So I am anyhow. Now, while you keep while you keep <laughs> OD green balls. Okay, so while you talk now, I'm gonna count how many balls went into this has it. Do, Lola, do you know what this is? This is the Hazard 4, but which one is it? Do you know? Okay, Lola, research that for me. Um, I'm going to get the guys from uh, Hazard 4 to come on, actually, and talk about this. It's a cool, I don't know if you guys can see this. looks like a cool sling pack to me. You know, you can put a bunch of stuff in here, put an SBR, right? Would you they put Like a bunch of balls. Yeah, you can you can probably get an SBR and still get. You know what? I'm gonna count how many balls are in here. Go, go ahead, Patrick. Oh, someone had this question. <laughs> There's a question. Serious. This is a serious, serious question. Serious, serious question. Yeah. Okay. What's Patrick's next favorite handgun? It, I'm oh god, <laughs> like trying to change gear from the balls conversation <laughs> is. <laughs> it ain't easy. Be serious for a second because I got to count these balls. I got to count these because now I have to see, like, when I do this in the future, I'm going to give people a report on how many balls could get in this thing. So, you know, that so that people will have a point of reference. This is, can like, we, serious. Can, can, we, can, can we stop calling them balls and start calling okay. them tack, tack, tack? So, so, no, hang on. We're going to come yeah, up with a, another name for these things. Okay, fine. Tack to, tack to Tactical tacticals. 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 Tactile sickles. There we are. Tactile sickles. Okay. Tactile sickles. Yeah. Sh sure. I remember that. <laughs> no. No. You just it's, it's testicles, but tactical. Tactile sickles. Testicles. Ta tactile tactical sickles. Testicles. Why are we saying this, man? <laughs> this is crazy. You, you are doing this. This is not even me. This is Patrick doing this. For anyone who wants to know, I didn't start Apparently, that just now. I didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm a very uptight person. <laughs> yeah, that was Patrick. Yeah, Patrick, that was a serious question. You have to answer this while I count these. Because I'm trying not to lose count. I have to count all of these and remember the count. Tactical sickles. Yeah, one tackle the count. So I'm locking it on you, and I'm gonna count how many are in. No, actually, no, I'm not gonna lock it on you. I'm just gonna start counting. Go ahead. What's your next? What's your your number two choice for uh, number um, one tactical sickle? Uh, my <laughs> number two choice for handguns past the Glock. Uh, if I've got to have one, man, like it's a toss up right now. 
It's a toss-up between CZP10C and the um, FN509. FN509 is a really, really solid gun. I know it will do everything I want it to do and then some. It's stupid reliable, but the P10C has a pretty good trigger after you shoot it a little bit to kind of get it past that broken endpoint. Um, probably would err towards the 509, though, as my fave between the two. Um, so there's that. I haven't had a chance to get on a... MMP uh, M20 compact yet, but I've got a feeling that that might win out like all together. Okay. Everyone remember I was at 27 balls. <laughs> I'm going to say something right now. I'm still taking them out. I'm still taking them out. <laughs> 27 tactical the, sickles. Yeah. So far, we've taken out 27 from from this thing okay so i guess this was about what the other thing is the front sight the same size it looks larger than the hds or Ameriglow. yes that's it from is. this from, um, uh, holster yeah it, it is and i'll tell you what i'll do is mr holster man uh harry i recognize i think you follow me on instagram harry don't you i'm waiting for a response 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. <laughs> uh, where is Harry? We're Harry up to 50. Is... We're up to 50. So here we go. So basically 51, 52, 53, 54. 54 of those balls were in this bag. 54. That's the official so... number of how many balls we can get into this particular backpack. Of the what are they? Tacticals. Tactical sickles. Tactical sickles. That sounds like bicycles. Tactical sickles. Okay. I'm trying to come up with a way. I see. So I okay. Tactical nuts. Tyvin's calling them tactical nuts. Tactical sickles. No. Tactical sickles. Tactical sickles. Tactical sickles. Tactical sickles. Yes, tacticals. Yes, we got fifty-four there you in go. here. We got fifty-four in here. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, they're all over the ground right now. It looks crazy here. Let me see if I can move my camera around and show people. Look at the floor. <laughs> Lola's gonna be really bad about I this. Is There's little... lots of balls all over the floor. It's like a orgy of balls. You know, it's like a ball bukkake here. Okay. That's, that's enough. I don't think that's the direct, it's, it's not necessarily a ball bukkake. I, I think that, that the bukkake is a result of the balls. Uh, it's kind of a chicken and the egg thing, really. Yeah, it's like, yeah, which, does one come out of the other or whatever? Okay, so we got 54 if, if, if in there. Our, <laughs> if, if our Harry's Holsters guy wants to speak up and ask that question again, um, I, I I broke up my caliper so I can measure this for him. Okay, uh, yeah, but let's yeah, let's yeah. get back to seriousness. The number I, I, was fifty four on that though. I, yeah, um, so I, I did want to talk about that briefly. Um, you do know that like there is already a standardized measure, measurement of uh, capacity as far as yeah, bags but that's go. boring. That's boring as hell. I think my way is way more fun. <laughs> so if you wanted to do it, if, it, like if you wanted to make it something fun, it would have been, like I would, I want to know how many like Pillsbury rolls I can fit into a bag. Like that would have been a more yeah, valid. I mean, this, so this is something universal that people, you know, everyone well, out there. Yeah, can, I, I bought these on Amazon. So if you guys want to know, I mean, there you go. Yeah. It's like the you know there that's the size of it comparatively, you know. Yeah, 54, 54 of the. I know we could do, you know, this. it's probably written on the I, thing. I, I, yeah, well, yeah, no, it's probably written on the thing, but you're yeah. right. It's not as much fun. It would have no. been more practical if we knew how many, like, buttermilk biscuits fit inside of it, though. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to keep buttermilk biscuits around here. I will be, t if you think I'm fat now, <laughs> if there are buttermilk biscuits around here, and then I would have had to buy, I mean, that's what you could say. That's probably like the size of a buttermilk biscuit in your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, Average. Yeah. Man, you know. man, more or less, more or less. Yeah. More or less. yeah so, <laughs> you know, I thought this would be a cheap way to come up with some kind of reference point that in the future, when <laughs> we've got bags in there, like we know this one took 54. 
we can have another bag and like, oh, how many of those go in there? Just in case, like for some reason, let's say it was the coming apocalypse and someone was gonna bug out and they're like, dude, I wonder how many of these I can get into my backpack just in case I wanna like jump into it in the future, like a little, you know, what do they call the thing that the kitties jump into and play with all the balls? Uh, I, that would be a ball pit. A ball pit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna Holy stop. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna stop. We were talking about something. We we were talking about something serious, Patrick, and you kept you kept like deflecting. <laughs> it's not my fault. I didn't have a giant ball sack on camera. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I need I need to be serious. I need I need to not be fun anymore. That's yes, we were answering. We were far. answering someone's question. It was Mr. Holster. I think you were asking if Mr. Holster follows you on Instagram. Uh, no, it wasn't Mr. Holster. It was Harry's Holster. Oh, Harry's Holster. Okay, that's a. I didn't even see that comment. I'm sorry. <laughs> what the. So we're gonna yeah, have so to you're roll back. We're talking about how my uh, lower thirds used to work. Well, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with this stupid thing. God. Oh boy, there's <laughs> lots of comments coming in here. Uh, Mr. Holster says, "I'm not sure playing with Doughboys is better than Hank's balls." Uh, oh, Lawrence Lerwick says, "TMI." Uh, Chris Bullis says, let's just face it, uh, Hank just wants, wanted to be able to play with his balls. <laughs> Tyvin's talking about milk duds. I don't know where Tyvin's going. Vanessa Kitty says, size of the front dot. That was the question. <laughs> wow, Vanessa Kitty's actually like able to focus. <laughs> size, size of dot in front yeah. of side. So it is larger than um, like the eye dots. So I'm going to break this down real quick. Yeah. So I can just use the slides. It's a lot easier that way. So Puerto Rico, just as a side note, Puerto Rico is entirely without par uh, power as Hurricane Maria hammers island with devastating force. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, Puerto so, Rico. It's getting hit I'm real bad. The slide, uh, the, you know, the, the, you. the dots are a little bit bigger on the... Um, the excess sites. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it is. I've measured it. it okay, it, it is. It is larger. Um, it's hard to get it to focus. Um, hold on a second. Hold on. Oh, oh, right there, right there. You're focused. You're focused. Don't move. Don't move. Right. Hold it. So the, the dot is a little bit bigger. Um, you know, the front sight post is a little taller. Then, and now we're comparing these to the Ameriglo eye dots because, I mean, if you look at the, you know, overall layout, it's orange front with a tritium vial in the front blade. And then in the rear, you've got, you know, basically the same, you know, sight picture, more or less. So, um, they're, they're, like I said, it, it's just another option um, if you're into, like, a more pronounced sight picture. The F8 sites would be an option for you, maybe, uh, if you're really into that, like, orange color on this. Uh, and, and when I say orange, I mean it's like, you know, Whataburger orange. Okay. So that's designed uh, to pull your eye in faster? Yeah. So they'll try to keep it yellow, and they're really big on the science side of things. Um, and, like... They, they they kind of differ from my perspective on things in that, that they pay a lot of attention to what like optometrists say and what like actual science says and I would rather just like paint 30 sites, go out to the range and find out which one works best yeah. for me. Um, people want you to go over which sites those were you were showing again. I know I missed um, it so I have no so clue. So on the SIG, uh, these are the new XS sites, uh, F8 sites. So this is a pre-production model. They may not be exactly like this when uh, they ship out to stores, but... Uh, is that a 320? 
Say again? Is that a, a SIG 320? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's it's a little bit nicked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody, it looks like someone was hitting that in the back. Yeah. Illegally. Yeah. <clears throat> Where's my hammer? Oh, <laughs> don't, don't even start again. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like I've got the hammer here somewhere. Oh, boy. We're getting a live demo. Oh, yeah. So v Vanessa Kitty wants to know if he buys a Glock to go with the with his Kunin, which one should he check out? A Glock? What's the purpose of the Glock? Why are you buying a Glock if you have a Kunin? Like, are you buying it for carry? Or are you buying it for range time uh, practice? Are you going to shoot competitively? What? Yeah, that's a good question. What are you buying it for? Uh, no one... At a lot of Alessasis, whatever. Alessasis, Alessasis. Uh, yes, they do look a lot like the straight eight sights. It's the same uh, tritium vial orientation, so you do have one vial over the other, uh, but you do get like uh, that that orange front sight with both the F8 and the I dots. So you got the I dot sights here on my uh, Glock seven or nineteen C rather, and. Than the F8 sites here. Yeah. And I could tell, by the way, that lots of people are just joining now. And because uh, they're, they're, um, they're still on where we were talking about 1911s, because David Johnson says, you're right. I own a 1911. It was my dad's, and it's in a glass case on the wall for art. Nothing wrong Glock with that. versus 1911. Glock comes with plastic sites, 1911 you get steel. I don't care. <laughs> Type it. You are really riling Tyvin up, man. Ty, I could just picture Ty, I don't know what Tyvin's he's a truck driver. He he was uh he was in the army and now he's a truck driver. He's done a lot of stuff, but Ty I could just imagine Tyvin right now just really riled up. So, so um Oh wait, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll we'll do this. Um so we are clear. I wanna wanna make sure that we you know I'll we'll double, double check. Yep. Yes. Um, so, I don't want to hit my computer. Did it go off? No, no, I, I don't want to hit my computer. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. All right. So, so you haven't fixed that yet. Has the fix come out? Uh, I don't know. Here, so you can hear it drop there, right? Should be able to hear it, right? So I'm gonna hit it like twice, and then okay. that was three times. Whatever. <laughs> you hear? You're not hearing this? The striker drop. See, yeah, I saved that time. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, drop that time, I could tell. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Mike Ryan says he likes that Glocks uh, make plastic sights. He sees them as temporary until you put on the ones you personally yeah. like. Yeah, they're like dovetail protectors. Yeah, on your AR-15s. Um, Wardex says now he has that song in his head. I'm not sure what song he's talking about. Hammer time. Uh, oh, hammer, hammer time. Oh, hammer time. <laughs> hammer time. Uh, ding, 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 ding. I think Walter started that. Walter started the hammer time. Um, I forgot there was something else. Someone else was saying questions. Oh, um, some of the people want to know what's the gun above the window. That is a. Busted ass old uh, Springfield, 1903 A3. That, that was Marky Mark 526, by the way, that acts that. So, just for reference. So, Marky Mark, uh, yeah, it is a 1903 A3 that is like severely busted. Um, so it was a rebuild. This is actually one of the National Ordnance Inc. Uh, receivers that was built on a paper uh, on a uh, on a parts kit 
So it's got a good barrel. Like all of the other parts are okay, except for the stock. And uh, the receiver is a cast part that was built in the 50s. Uh, and this is actually like really unsafe to shoot. So it's been disabled and turned into a wall hanger. Maybe one day I'll uh, pull the barrel off and put it on another gun. Uh, but this thing is just like not safe at all. <laughs> <laughs> So basically a paperweight, I think that uh, yes. David Johnson yeah, says. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is a paperweight. It's, it's, it's definitely a wall hanger. Um, you know, I, I would never put live ammo into this thing. And Like, I've actually removed the firing pin. Um, and, well, I took it out and I cut it because I want it to not work. Okay, very cool. So you know what? Uh, we're going to begin to wrap it up here. So if people yep. have um, if people have any final questions, let us know. And um, I did show this at the beginning, but I'm sure there's folks just coming in now. So I will show this while Patrick probably will get out some guns. But this is what I have with me here. I picked this up today from Big Daddy Guns. This was in the store. It actually um, – they ordered this for another customer. This is the Daniel Defense – DDM4 ISR, 300 blackouts, integrally suppressed. There you go. So it's um, the the barrel. I think it's a nine inch barrel, and then the rest of it is a suppressor. So the barrel ends somewhere in here, and then the rest of it is suppressor. So probably like seven inches in there or more is a suppressor. Actually, wait, yeah, more than that. Oh um, man. So there you go, integrally suppressed from Daniel Defense. This is actually my first Daniel Defense that I've ever owned. I haven't put any um, optics or sights on it yet or light or anything like that. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to look to put some stuff on this. I'm going to you know, probably do a review of this, but this is, this is actually something that I, that I got for myself, my first Daniel Defense. There you go. I know there's got to be some Daniel Defense uh, fans out there, some proponents of Daniel Defense. So 300 blackout, integrally suppressed, you know. I'm looking forward to shooting it. I think here's what I'm going to do, and someone was asking about this earlier, Patrick. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to put um, the uh, Echo 2 trigger from Fostec into this gun at some point. And um, see how that works okay. in here. I'll sh I'll shoot it without that at first, but I'll probably put it in there and see what happens with it. I man, I would just roll with a Geisley trigger sometime. Yeah. Uh, they they, I you can shoot those pretty darn fast. Uh, mm -hmm. Like unless you just want to dump a bunch of ammo. Yeah. What do you think about the um you know those different kinds of triggers like the? Um, I'm not a fan at all. Yeah. I either give the, the people call the binary. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've shot the binary trigger a bunch, and um, like I just don't see a practical value to it at all. Yeah. Uh, Lawrence Lerwick says, "Just run irons and go." No. Why? Why would you want to be like less than <laughs> less than I? Why, why do you want a gun that's less than ideal? Yeah. Why do you want something that's not as good as it can be? T.J. Blaze says, uh, "It's nice, just too short of a barrel." Uh, Chris B says uh, DD is good stuff. Daniel Defense. Yep, they make so, a pretty decent gun. Um, Dan Nugent likes it. He says it's sweet. Be better if it had an M lock, though. Yeah, Maximilian the Mighty wants to know what you think about the FNX forty five. Five, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. So, and then people, you know, Dead that, Ender says, uh, do you think the army should have gone with the Beretta M nine three A? Lots of no. <laughs> what Why? what what gun porn do you have to share with us, my friend? Um, so, like uh, some of the guys may have missed it, but uh, this is going to be a pretty rad little project that'll uh, kind of be happening over the next month or two or whatever. Um, the plan for this gun it's a Glock nineteen C Gen four. Uh, so that means it is compensated. That means these cuts here in the barrel um, actually port gas out whenever the trigger is pulled. Uh, these two little you know, jets come up and kind of keep the muzzle from rising too much. Right? When did Glock, Glock release that? 
So this was their summer special. They they announced the uh, the the Gen Four nineteen Cs would be happening uh, at NR, NRA show, and I finally got my hands on one thanks to my buddies over at DSG Arms. Um, so I finally got my hands on one, and uh, now I'm going to start doing some rad stuff to it. Uh, this gun is going to be milled to accept a uh, shield RMS sight directly on the slide so it's going to mount straight to the slide and then um, we're going to be using a Miracle to four sights on it so it's going to have the 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 shortest smallest package overall um i think this so gun that's not mos right you said that's not... no this is not mos no why would go out do that um, and not make it mos well i guess you don't care for it to be mos right I, so mos is good but it's not ideal Mm -hmm. um, like it's it's not necessarily the best solution, but it is a solution. Um, now, like the MOS models that take an RMR, they're actually going to mount the RMR slightly higher than they will on like a milled slide like this one. Now, the shield RMS that we'd be putting on this thing is going to be sunk really, really low. So I'm not going to have to run suppressor height sights. I'm going to be able to use. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that is better. Profile. Yeah. That yeah. Gives you so flexibility then. Like to give you an idea, like you see how low profile that front sight blade is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's how low profile we're talking on co-witnessing iron sights on this on this build. Yeah. Tony Long um, wants to know what's MOS. Don't at, um don't kill me for asking. So uh, that's a modular uh, optics system. Yeah, so you can get some Glocks um, with the slide already cut out for red dots. Yes. So that's basically yeah. what that is. Yeah, it's it's cut out for these plates. So you mount the dot to a plate, and then the plate mounts to the gun, basically. Yeah. Razor JB says MOS leaves too much room for error. Um, tolerances aren't good. Too high threads for screws and all that kind of stuff. And I have seen people I have that have problem. Seen yeah, I mean, if you put it in wrong, yes, they they do strip out. Uh, but as long as you don't like install it like a drunk monkey, you'll be okay. Yeah, I've I've seen some people have problems. Um, I think someone I know had problems with Trigicon. The plate that they have for Trigicon was no good from Glock. Like literally broken his hands and blah blah blah. Really? So, interesting. Yeah, I'd like to yeah. see photos of that. Uh, no, that's interesting because, um, like, I've heard good things about the MOS plates and uh, was thinking about actually just having this gun milled to accept MOS plates to make it a little easier on myself. Uh, but we've decided, like, I've been talking to a buddy of mine uh, over at Salient, and I think we're probably going to just mount a shield RMS on this, um, you know, directly to get it as low as possible. But... Yeah. Uh, this guy yeah, had to so, actually order from Amazon like special plates from Trigicon themselves. So that's what Glock even yeah. recommends people do that he said. Um, someone wants to know, Chris B wants to know how old you are. And Razor I, J. An eight, I'm, I'm like over 18, under 70. There you go. He wants to be mysterious about his age. I'm going to say he's 35. So there you go. Close, close. Um, uh, yeah, actually, I just uh, I turned 34 five days ago. Oh, okay. Happy birthday. Uh, no, oh, it, a little more than five days. It, yeah, like uh, eight days ago. Oh, okay. Happy birthday. Yeah. Are you? So what are you? A Libra? I, I don't know. know. Yeah, one of my my uh, my my younger son the turned show, 17. Uh -huh. The Tyvan Show uh, says have it laser cut for a red dot if cheaper and just as good. No. There, there is no cheaper and just as good. Like that's not a thing that happens in the gun industry. Yeah, it's, it's expensive. expensive. <laughs> it's always a compromise. It is always somebody lying to themselves, saying no, it's just as good as this other option. Like laser is not going to cut the slide the same way. Putting it into a machine that's designed to remove material in a precise manner, it's just it's not the same. Like yeah, just as good. When somebody says just as good. Like you now have become irrelevant in my conversation, um, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not attacking you, Tyvin. Um, it's this is something that we hear often in the gun industry, and like something that really pisses me off. It makes me want to hit people in the face with a hammer. 
Um, <laughs> Don't make him like, drop test you, Tyvin. <laughs> just as good is not – like the second you say just as good is like – a clear indication that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I see. I can see Tyvin right now, uh, either calling me or texting me on the way home. Okay, Dead Enders wants to know: Is that 19 C USA made? Yes. Yeah, they all are US made. Yeah. And uh, Tony London wants to know. He says he purchased a tactical clip, unscrews the back plate, and adds. Uh, and you add it there for what is it? Uh, that just went away. Did someone just? Yeah, take uh, it? he retracted it. Um, oh. So I, I think I know what he has. There's, yeah, some, yeah, there's the clip draw. The clip draw is what he's yeah, got. Yeah, the clip draw. Um, yeah, please don't carry that. Please don't. No, no. Please don't. I used to do it, and I don't do it anymore. I don't think it, it's it is not a good idea. so dangerous. It's so dangerous. Yeah, yeah, it's incredibly dangerous. Please do not use that product. Yeah. Uh, like um, so, for those of you that you don't know, it attaches to the back plate here. So. Um, this little plastic piece on the back of the Glock. You pop it out. out. Yeah. You put it in its place. It runs a clip down the side of the slide, and that's how you attach it to your pants. Well, guess what? You've got around in the chamber, but this right here, the big dangerous hooky part in the trigger guard, um, that is still completely open to being snagged on something. Uh, so, like, I just flat out wouldn't use one if they were a bad idea. Uh, there are plenty of holsters out there that if you're looking for a low profile, um, you know, holster, like this old style designs holster, you'll see, you can see how thick the Glock is without it. The second that I put it on, yeah. it has gained no width whatsoever. Like I, I, where's, I just had my caliper. Yeah. Now um, maybe, I don't know how new Tony is to guns and stuff like that. When I first started, I did have that on my Glock, but yeah, like you're saying, you know, if you're carrying with one in the chamber, which you should be doing if you're doing this to defend your life, because if you're not and you get into something, you're going to be kind of screwed. So, yes. you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to measure it from the top. I'm just going to measure what holster. Slide what holster is that that you have? He wants uh, to it's know. old style designs and I will get a link to you just a second. Um, so this measures out at 1.001 inch without the holster. And then whenever I put the holster on, we are looking at, 1.074. Um, so the the width of the holster is getting there, getting there. Yeah. That is how much the holster is adding to that gun. Like I would rather deal with this much width rather than an unprotected trigger guard. Yeah. There's no reason for that. Yeah, um, and you can you can send me a link and I'll put it in the chat or something like that. But there's lots yeah, of yeah. guys that make cool, good Kydex out there. You know, it's um, kind of a cottage I industry. That does it quite like this, though. Oh, okay, and um, who, just tell us who that was again. It's this old style designs. He's a, a local guy to me, and uh, the dude that designed the holster with him is an ex Delta dude. So, like an old Delta guy said, "Hey, man, like I really need a holster. I know you do knife sheaths. This is what I need. Can you help me out?" And this is what he came up with. Um, so, and I carry uh, both a Glock 19 in one of these things, and I also carry my uh, Glock 43 in one of these things. And uh, the 43 yeah. holster I've been using for about a year. Um, the uh, that mm, yes, that is the. Is that the right link? Oh no, that's the wrong link. Sorry. That's that's all of the links. Oh, yep. That's terrible. That's of many me. links. I think I. Yeah. What did I? You do? copied both. There's there's one on top of the other. I was uh, like, what the heck? Um, but yeah, okay, yeah. Um, here. okay, here we go. So I'll put it in again. Tony, this guy is in Texas. He's out of Boyd, Texas. Um, yeah, he's about a half hour from where I am. And uh, like, there are a couple of cool things about this. So I've heard people complain about the holster collapsing. And like, I've not really had much of an issue with that. They say, well, I can't reholster. Well, one, you probably... Um, yeah, you, you, you probably, like, 
don't take into account like you shouldn't be reholstering fast period but if you do need to reholster like here I've collapsed it this is how it normally sits ah. and then collapsing it like that so say it's in my waistband I can still get it in there like how the clip is positioned allows you to open it up with the muzzle and get it in there um, but it's really, really lightweight. The one thing that people fail to see is this clip is just the the best clip on the planet. Um, it's a spring steel clip, but you've got a little tooth in there. You guys can see that. For extra grip. Well, what it does, you can put it on like gym shorts or pajama pants or whatever. Like you don't have to have a belt. Um, so like when I go out of town, uh, like when we saw each other at NRA, man, like I was carrying my 43. This is the gun that I was carrying um, in this holster. I carried it all day, every day that I was in Atlanta because Atlanta's not exactly the safest place to be. <laughs> not at all. And then at night, um, like when I would go down or out to dinner or something like that, or I had to run down to the front desk to get some coffee or something because so I was staying up late editing, um, like I would toss this on my pajama pants. And because of that little clip, I can get away with like carrying it in pajamas, uh, run down to the front desk and yeah. like, or it like Mike, come out Mike Bryant says, you know, or your yoga pants. Hey, yeah, I Great don't think your... you guys want to say that. That would be bad. <laughs> Great for your yoga pants. Um, and I did put a link to this for anyone who's watching or listening. It's in the video. So yeah. if you're listening yeah. to this on iTunes later on, go back to the actual video and it's in the description. There's a link. For yeah, it. and we, we've also uh, reviewed it over at the Firearm Blog. I reviewed it, um, and I, I hands down, like, the thing yeah. is the best holster on the market, period. Anyway, the, the gun porn, and then we're going to go. Yes, um, yes, we're almost we're almost done. We still got a bunch of people <laughs> hanging know, out with us, so, I yeah. Don't, I, don't, I don't mind, I don't mind. Um, so I've got my Ruger Mark IV back. I'm excited. Uh oh, hold on. Let me lock this on. Mark IV is back. Like I've got the uh, the recall done. Oh okay. And, uh, oh, I, I can clean it now. I can do things to it, like clean it, and not need a degree in mechanical engineering to put it back together. So that's exciting. Um, I've already modified this thing. Uh, it's got a red dot on it. There you go. Do you, so, yeah, uh, this is, are you going to put a suppressor on there? Yeah, I've got a, a suppressor that I mount on it. Actually, I shot this uh, the other day. Um, we were shooting it at 50 yards on, like, Ipsic size, the uh, Ipsic ABC size torsos at, like, 50 yards and, like, transitioning from one to the other. It was a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, it's a really, really, really solid little gun, man. Like, um, I think after I get some more ammo through it and I start getting these mags broken in, it's going to be a hell of a uh, training tool. But, um, yeah, we've got a, a stock Ruger Mark IV 2245 Lite with the recall performed on the, uh, the grip module. And then I've got a burst fast fire mount and a Vortex Venom 3 MOA red dot. And uh, turn that on so you guys can see that. Uh, there you there. go. Oh, you club. Yeah. So, you know, it's got some, like, witness lines in the back, so you don't really need a rear sight. But um, it's, it's a pretty solid little setup. Like, it's really fast on steel. It's a great, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a great, great range companion. And I'm glad to have it back. I'm glad to go ahead and put a bunch of ammo through it. So I thought you guys might want to see the new, uh, the new hotness. This is probably going to be my new favorite handgun. I will shoot this. More 22 than is fun to shoot, right? I mean, 22 is like so yeah. awesome to shoot, you know? So, like, when I go out to the range, I'll take all of my video stuff and all my other stuff, but, like, before I take anything out, I fish this out of my bag, um, you know, I load the mags up, and I, you know, set my steel up, and I run through, and I probably shoot about 400 rounds of 22 before I do anything. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Good to know. I, 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 I so That's your warm-up. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, a two to 400 rounds of 22 long rifle is my warm-up. Um, so, like, I, I mean, on any given week, I'm going to the range uh, once, if not twice a week. 
So, uh, I mean, like, I, I'm shooting anywhere between 400 and, like, 800 rounds of 22 a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was time for a new one. Like, I had a yeah. Mark III previous to this, and it was pretty, like, worn out. Yeah. Now, here's a quick question. I guess Tony London's on that website, and he wants to know, is it one size fits all? Because he can't choose the uh, G19 5th Gen. So is it – it should be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the 1923 holster will fit the Gen 5, yes. Yeah, so you should be good to go on that, Tony. Yeah, yeah. No, you'll be um, fine there. Um, yeah, actually, the dust cover is the same size on the Gen 5 versus the Gen 4 and Gen 3. Um, so, like, the, the, the bevel on the um, – what you call, uh, I call it um, – the bevel on the slide doesn't carry down into the frame. So that's what really matters. Uh, you'll just have a little extra space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. And Mike Bryan says he wished they made a Glock style lower for those. You know, I believe you might be onto something good, sir. Uh, I think that I'm going to have to write that down on a piece of paper and call somebody. <laughs> for help, actually, yeah, make sure you um, you know if that becomes a thing. Make I heard sure it we nowhere. Know that, that idea I, came I from Mike Bryant. <laughs> yeah. You know. See. Circle no, trademark. <laughs> 2245 lower. Okay, so it looks like Tony's ordering it. And you, and we, you don't have any, like, uh, affiliation with that? No, no, guy, right? no, not at all. Not at all, no. Um, so how I came to know um, Eric is uh, through Brian M. And Brian M., like I said, is an ex-Delta Force guy. He's an ex-CAG guy. Um, he retired back in, like, 04, something like that. And I met him through a training company. So it was kind of one of those things where I, like, you know, met the dude through a dude. And, uh, like, when I went out to a training class, like, Eric was there. He was in the same class. And he says, hey, you know, Brian, you, sh- you show him those holsters. And I was like, yeah, man, you know, tell me more about him. He goes, here, and handed me a 43 and a 19 holster. And I've carried them for a long time. I've bought more of them because I keep another 43 in my truck for those times that I forget to grab my gun going out the door. And like, it's just, yeah, you know, they're, they're the bee's knees. Um, um, Dead Ender says patent pending. And then Mike Bryan says, if you get it made, you owe him one. Oh, so. yeah. No, I mean, like, I, I, I'm going to try to, like, I, I, seriously, I'm calling somebody tomorrow and hoping to God that they can do it. Cause uh, they were looking at doing P320 grips, but they haven't uh, produced one due to obvious reasons. Um, but, you know, we'll mm-hmm. see what we can make happen. Like I would be really excited if I could, if that, that would uh, come to fruition for sure. Uh, other gun porny things. I haven't talked about this. This is probably my favorite double action, single action gun. Okay, what, um, what is it? Yeah, Tell just, us what it is. <laughs> It's just a Beretta M9. I mean, it's nothing special or fancy, but uh, like it just shoots really, really well. Everything is in the right spot. Um, like I need to do the decock uh, only conversion on it, but um, everything is, you know. We actually right have a video space. on that, I believe. Or you know, I think uh, maybe Babyface has that. I can't remember which one of us has that, but there's a video. There's a couple videos out there. Uh, yeah, point. I did, I did, re- did a video on it a while back as well. Um, let's see, I'm curious if it comes up in the video results. The video. Yeah, Actually, so, it's the first results, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. We, uh, might, we might be the only people who've done a video on that. Is it me or Babyface? I don't know. Eric, click that link and see if uh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up on the... Uh, Click this link you just sent. Yeah, the big, the big Google result. It should be, uh, should be TFP TV right at the top. Oh, there you go. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. The Red so, M9. Yep. No, I mean it's a solid gun, um, but like I shoot it really, really well. So um, the Tyvan Show wants me to show you this. He said this was cut by a laser. Hold on. Let me see if I can get this to focus. That doesn't look like it's very deep. Yeah. Who, who did that so I can Google this? Okay, yeah. so let's see. It says Semper Fi on it. 
Right. Um, it means the guy that owns it eats crayons. Yeah. So if there's a better. This is probably a better shot. So it looks like a burst fast fire on there, but it looks like the the dot is really really high on that slide though. Yeah. Let's see if we can get it to. Focus. Uh, Tyvin, the Tyvin show. Do you, do you, where is that uh, photo from? Yeah. So yeah, Tyvin show. Let us know where is it from. All he says, all work yeah. done by laser. Um, but from where? Who did it? Let's ask him who did it. Um. Let's see here. So there you go. Um. Yeah. No. I. I, I mean. Um, okay. Anyway. Um. Okay. So we already took a look at the. Um. Uh, or take a look at the ITM AT84 earlier. And uh, the reason I had this out actually is I, I just got the factory grips prior to this. There was some crappy Packmeyer grips that were really common. Um, but uh, yeah, I finally got my hands on some pre V grips to go on this thing and make it right. Okay, so you're going to be upgrading that? Uh, this? No, yeah, no. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh. No, I, it had uh, some Packmeyer grips on it when oh, I okay. bought it, and like I wanted the original uh, wood grip. Oh, okay, you want it? Okay, you want it to be back so, to the original? Yeah. Well, yeah, and I, you will not believe how difficult it is to find a set of decent pre B CZ seventy five grips that are are of the right generation, because uh, this gun is like serial number two hundred and fifty. Okay. Um, and and like trying to like nail that down is, is like the right iteration of grips is really tough um where is our i i really want I, before we jump off oh, i want okay. to make sure that one like, thing. and wait yeah, no, there's I'm, more <laughs> well no i had one more um i've got the new oh, uh okay. smith and wesson uh model 66 combat magnum so that is what are you thinking about that so far? Model six. I haven't. I I haven't shot it yet. Um, it looks good. What is that like a satin finish? Yeah, it's a satin finish. So you get a six, six shot, three fifty seven mag. Um, like trigger is reasonably good. Sight picture is good, like you would expect. Uh, single action is a little creepy, but you know. Yeah, Tyvin uh, Show says just Google Glock laser cut PNG. It will show you the picture and who did the work. Uh, so I'm reasonably certain that the laser work is going to be the stippling on the frame. I'm, I'm reasonably certain. Mm -hmm. Laser cut PNG. I'm not seeing it in the Google. It's not coming up in the Googles. That is a Glock. Is it? Is it like no? That's. I don't know what. Where that photo is coming from? It's not in the Googles. Yeah, let me see uh, if I see it in my Googles when I Googles it. <laughs> what was it? Glock laser cut PNG. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. Glock um, laser cut. I'm thinking how many balls were in the bag? PNG. <laughs> Tony London. Uh, what's your next purchase? I think the revolver was he saying? Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's it's that guy. Yeah. Uh, I don't see I, that I image hear, either. I, I can hear Lola audibly sigh. Yeah. <laughs> Lola's probably like, okay, these guys will not get off the air right now. They're googling shit. I cannot no, believe I, 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 at that's, this that's late. Thing yeah. That I wanted to uh, see is I like if it's a legitimate thing, then cool. I want to say that. Um, uh, I don't see it either, but, bad. Uh, but I'm pretty certain wrong. that that laser cutting is uh, the stippling. I see something. There's another Simper Fi thing. It's some crap off of Pinterest, it looks like. Anyway, either either way, it doesn't matter. Um, you, uh, we're, we're I, think he, go. I think you just sent me a link or whatever. Oh, good. It. Okay. Um, let me see where it goes. Yeah, I don't know where it's going. Okay, you know what? 
Forget yeah, it. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, forget it. Let's wrap it up. Okay, so let, yeah. I'll give you a chance right here to talk about what you guys have coming up, where people can find you if they want to do things with you. Uh, he says it's CNS Engraving in Columbus, Ohio. Thank God. Oh my God, Tyvin, seriously, you could have done. No, oh, yeah. we're we are you know retentive <laughs> gun guys, and we can't. <laughs> Lola Lola's for, mad. For no right. one who, uh, who's hearing this in the background, how Lola's like, let it go. We don't let yeah, no, no, shit I, go. I, I, yeah, I, I can absolutely hear it. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything uh, other than the kind of, I, mean, I, I don't care that much. Like, the bottom line is it's it's like uh, less than optimal. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what you say, <laughs> the guys that sponsor TFB TV, um, Ventura Munitions for our ammo, proxy bid uh because we end up getting some cool guns through them sometimes um and then everybody else that we work with you can find me on uh, the firearmblog.com or tfb tv on youtubes and uh if you want to follow me on instagram you can see all the cool stuff like my wife getting drugged down my hallway by the dog or um you know, all kinds of other stuff because uh, I do have a, a, a puppy that's a Belgian Malinois. You can see that. You can see the kid and uh, whatever I've got coming up on TFP TV. Uh, but check What's me your out on Instagram. Uh, well, it, so uh, the Instagram is at TFB Patrick on Instagram. And then Patreon is Patreon slash TFB TV. Absolutely. So there you go. That's yes. good ways to check out. You know, and definitely thanks all to you, Patrick. Things, right. All of the things. This thanks for coming. Longer. This Why do I always lose right? track of time? I always yeah. lose track of time when we talk about balls. Yeah, absolutely. It was 54 balls. Just remember that. That might be a password in something. <laughs> it was 54 balls. Actually, I'm going to make that into a password. <laughs> for anyone who wants to know okay i want to thank everyone that's hanging out with us watching this staying up with us at this late hour all the folks in the chat you know thanks to you guys for hanging out and sticking with us all the way here to the end i want to thank everyone that yeah. sponsors us that would be um ran clp andrews custom leather and of course safety harbor firearms and let's not forget these dudes right here big daddy guns these dudes who make this all possible, all this craziness that goes on, Big Daddy Guns. And uh, I'm especially thankful for the people who support us on Patreon. That's how you keep us going, buying the ammo and all the other stuff that we have to do to make all this craziness a reality. Okay, so um, on my behalf and uh, Patrick R. from TFB, thanks for being here. We end it Thank with you. the peace. Peace out.